from 35 WSEE, this is the game of the week. Coldwell, rolling that way, looking, throwing down the middle, has a man, he's got it! Up straight up the middle, touchdown for the Ramblers, was fullback position, barreling at the five, touchdown central! Photography, the sports section. Unique, creative, and collectible. The sport Make section. your team season truly memorable. Call Scott Kuhn at 825-8344. The sports section. Why are more Americans driving the new Ford Taurus? More room. I traded up to Taurus from Lumina. Safety. Taurus has dual airbags, safety cell construction, and the highest frontal crash test rating. The looks alone hooked me. The ride and the power sold me. Taurus is the best-selling car in America. And now get $2,000 cash back or one-nine financing on Taurus. Oh, did I mention the $2,000 cash back or 1.9% financing? So why should you drive a Ford Taurus? Because there's more to afford. Coverage of the Game of the Week is brought to you by Taco Bell. Cross the border. Welcome to McDowell's Gus Anderson Field. I'm Gary Drapcho with Jim Lekorczyk, and we're set for our final regular season game of the week. And although both Central and Prep are headed for the playoff, Jim's coach Joe Tarasovich and his squad can go into the playoffs with a three-game win streak and a four-and-five record if they win tonight. If Cathedral Prep wins, they break a six-game losing streak heading into their first encounter. So a lot of things going on here, even though it's not a huge game by playoff implications. Yeah, absolutely. Both teams are in the playoffs, Gary. But again, who wants to play McDowell? One of the best teams mm -hmm. in the state, or uh, Meadville, who you may have a shot at beating. So uh, th there's a there's a lot riding on this game because you want if you can't win the district, you want to end the season on a positive note with as many wins as possible. And Prep, of course, at two and six. This is almost a new season for them. We both saw these uh, clubs uh, throughout this month of October, and I know when we saw Central, who were one and four at that time, and nearly upset undefeated McDowell. 10-7 to 7, they lost here at Gus Anderson Field about three weeks ago. At that time, McDowell was ranked fifth in the uh, state. They're still undefeated but not ranked anymore, but that's another story. But we said to ourselves, that's a good, that's probably the best 1-5 team in this area, and they have no doubt proven that. They have a, a win streak coming into this game with Cathedral Prep. Now you put everything into perspective, and they're looking much better. Their, their game against McDowell was a loss. They went ahead Dubois late in the game, but they were penalized for aiding the runner on the winning touchdown. They gave Woodland Hills a handful to start the season down in Woodland Hills. Woodland Hills just beat North Allegheny, and now they're ranked uh, honorable mention in the state. So they've got some good games under their belt despite losing. Yeah, they could very easily, instead of being 3-5, and five, be 4-4 four and four, or even 5-3 and three coming in. Cathedral Prep, on the other hand, after winning its first two games, Ballou from Washington, D.C., and then Buffalo St. Francis, a very, very tough schedule that has not been kind to Coach John Birchtold, because not only have they been losing, but they've also been beat up. They've, they've had a lot of physical games going in. They played some real physical teams, and it, it started to take its toll, but now they can start to make a statement. All right, here we go. We're underway at our game of the week. Cathedral Prep, as you see, receiving the opening kickoff. And it's out to the 25-yard line where the Ramblers will take over first and 10. Chris Loomis returning the opening kickoff of the Cathedral Prep Ramblers, who will start from near their own 25-yard line first and 10. Tonight's starting lineups brought to you by your local Toyota dealers. And this is the starting offensive lineup for the Cathedral Prep Ramblers. Loomis the split end, and obviously uh, one thing that has been not part of Cathedral Prep's offensive game is the passing game. Maybe they'll try to get something going in that regard tonight. They're Jim Gambler, the throw, quarterback, Gary. hands the ball straight ahead, and DeRamo carries it up over the 25 to the 28-yard line as your Toyota dealers bring you the starting defensive lineup for Central, which played very well shutting down a Hollidaysburg squad in the second half a week ago, allowing Central to come back and beat Hollidaysburg by a point to keep this uh, mini two-game winning streak alive. Gary, this is a good offensive line for Prep, but many times they're just outnumbered. People totally disregard the pass. This is a good offensive line. They've got tough kids up front, uh, but they just, they're not able to run the ball once the defense figures out they're not going to pass. 
It is Bowers and Duramo in the I formation behind quarterback Gemler, and Gemler off the play action fake to Bowers, wants to throw, wants to throw deep, and the ball is intercepted at the 45, at the 40. He's inside the 20-yard line, number five, Chris Dunlap, with the interception of the Jim Gemler pass, and Central is set up first and 10, deep in Cathedral Prep territory near the 20-yard line. So they tried to go deep on Central right away, but Chris Dunlap picked it off. Good defense, little play action, didn't fool anybody, and uh, the ball was a little underthrown, and uh, the safety, Chris Dunlap, giving Central great field position. Throwing the ball and knowing how to throw, things like that, Gary, it just takes time to put a passing offense in. So here's Central, first and ten, with Jerry Troop as the quarterback, and Randy Carson, their workhorse tailback, getting the first call of the evening on first down and powering his way down to the 16-yard line as tonight's starting lineups offensively as we quickly go from offense to defense brought to you by your local Toyota dealers and you see an offense that really had some trouble scoring points during the month of September but not so recently especially a game here we saw it against uh, Cleveland uh, St. Joe's in which they put up over 50 points I think the confidence Jerry Troop has now is the big difference from now and early on uh, he threw the ball well that night. Here comes Carson up over the 15, he's at the 10, he's at the 5, and he gets into the end zone for a touchdown. Randy Carson running over right tackle, and behind a big hole uh, created by the offensive line, he is able to score from about 16 yards away, and Central has drawn first blood. And there's the uh, Randy Carson we saw a lot last year before he got injured. We saw him maybe, what, three weeks ago, he's probably 60, 70 percent. Every week he's getting better, and uh, Gary's starting to hit full stride. I mean, he is a tremendous running back. Extra point attempt out of the hold of Jerry Troop. And now a flag is thrown, perhaps too much time, as Central tries to tack on the extra point. And that uh, occurring with 10-16 remaining here in the first half. So again, like our McDowell prep game last Friday, a score in the first two minutes of the game. The ball ball. Referee, Butch Smith. First start on the offense. I think it took McDowell three plays. Of course, they received the kickoff. It took Central, but they were set up uh, by a pass interception. Prep does not want to have to try and come back. I just don't think they have the offense to do it. So uh, they'll try the extra point after that five-yard procedure penalty. Central trying to make it 7 nothing, and despite the five-yard delay of game penalty, the kick is up and good. There's a break in the action, and with 10-16 remaining here in the first quarter, Central has jumped out to a 7 to nothing lead. Can you identify who it was that frightened you, man? I'll try. This Halloween, terrifying creatures are on the loose at Taco Bell. <laughs> Goosebumps at Taco Bell. Slappy's Candy Keeper, Cuddles the Horrible Hamster, Rapid Mummy, and Skullmobile. Get them now. Goosebumps Collectibles, only at Taco Bell. Woman also has another responsibility, and that is to do breast health exams on a monthly basis. That's another time when you can just pick a day of the month, the first day of the month, or, you know, your, your birth date, and do your breast health exam. And if you do notice anything that's different, you need to call your physician. Because we know 80% of the time, those lumps will be benign, and they're not really cancer. The onsides. Central ready to go, at kicking off with a 7 to nothing lead. The central kicker, number 13, Ryan Eback, after the extra point, boots this one. It's bouncing towards the sidelines, and it goes out of bounds. And a costly mistake, because instead of possibly keeping prep back to around their 20 with the uh, with the kick coverage team, they'll have it at their own 35. Here's a replay of the touchdown again, Jim. Gary, nothing special. Randy Carson, I think, wanted to take it up to the middle, bounced it outside, nobody was there, and then carried a couple players into the end zone. Uh, way too easy for Central. I think Joe Tarasovich's squad is starting to believe now that it can make some noise in the playoffs. I know they had some doubts early in the year when they lost uh, 
four of their first five games, actually five of their first six. But against McDowell, you can see them starting to gain some confidence. We had them then the following week, as I mentioned, against St. Joe's. They put 53 points on the board. Jerry Troop was playing well. And then you got to come from behind win last week. And you, all of a sudden, you start believing in yourself and believing you can win some ball games. And they've shown it here tonight so far. And Cleveland moved the ball with a great short mid-passing mid game. That's how they move the ball against the Falcons. Let's see if Prep tries to go to the air once again. First and ten from the 35 following Ebacks kickoff, which goes out of bounds. And Gemler on a handoff to DeRamo. DeRamo trying to get the corner, cuts it back across the 35, and then is pushed back after a couple of yards gained to the 37-yard line. But Central appears to be fired up on defense, and obviously an important series for Cathedral Prep, just to start establishing something and not let Central get to too much of control of this game early on. Another solid player for Central offensively and defensively is defensive tackle Eric Lynn, a 6'1", 240-pound senior. He got hurt last year. He was having a great season. When he got hurt, I uh, took a lot of the spirit out of their defense. Second down eight, we'll call it at the 37-yard line. It's Bowers and Duramo in the eye. Gemler straight back to throw, fires down the middle, and Loomis is hit as the ball is thrown over his head. Very close to pass interference there. Defending on the play was 31, Mike Bennett. Tried to time it perfectly, and uh, very close from an objective point of view as to win that ball. Had it been catchable, I think it was overthrown well to Loomis, but it looked like Bennett might have hit him just a bit early, but no flag on the play. You know, when you haven't thrown the ball well all year, Gary, you got to complete some short passes. And right here, I just think the ball is way overthrown and good timing by yeah, the look, defense. Yeah, looks like a good play on as we see it as another time. I think you want to hit maybe a little swing pass, a screen pass, get the confidence of the quarterback going and set the pace, the tempo for their passing game. Third down and eight now, definite passing situation. Gimler, three-step box, pump action fake, goes back another two-step, now fires it long down the field, and it is incomplete, in and out of the intended receiver's hands, number 83, Joe Salini, as he was cruising down the far sidelines at the 25-yard line. Gemler showing a nice arm that time. He got it there to Salani, but Salani couldn't pull it in. It would have been a whale of a catch if he'd been able to catch it. You can see a little stop and go here. He gives him the pump fake. Gemler has a good arm, and Salani was one of his favorite receivers last year on the JV team. He's a big kid at 6'2", 185. So Central now back in punt formation. As the Ramblers on fourth down will be punting from their own 25-yard line. And number nine, Brian Spry, putting it downfield across the 25, the 30, the 30, up the return after the 38-yard line, and that is where Central will take over first and 10 as number 22, Jeff Lyons, returns the punt for Central. First and 10 at their own 38, so another good offensive series start for the Central High Falcons. And Prep is not a team that can come back, Gary. Uh, from too many scores down. It's, it's right in their defensive line, Gary. Your local Toyota dealers bringing you the starting defensive line. Jeff Brzezinski had a nice game. He was our player of the week a week ago in that loss to McDowell here at Gus Anderson Field. Beautiful night for football. A lot different than it was last night or last week as Randy Carson runs around the corner, kept juking his way inside, bouncing it outside, and gets a solid four, maybe five yards out to the 42. Gary, if Carson can continue to get good yardage around the end, that's going to set up their uh, big fullback, Eric Farrell, not only on the draw. Remember how wide open he was a couple of times on that uh, pass play coming out of the backfield right. against McDowell? Right. Eric Farrell is, is a good football player. Central nearly upsetting McDowell here, 10-7 three weeks ago. It's the closest McDowell really has come to losing other than that 3 nothing win over Youngstown Ursula in the second week of the season. That's Farrell in motion, and Carson has the football again, and this time the Ramblers stack him up after only a yard gain to the 43-yard line. And it sets up third in about five for the Ramblers, or for the Falcons, rather, at the 43 of Central. All year, Preps defense has played well, but they're on the field so long, they just get exhausted towards the end of the third period into the fourth. Joe Tarasovich may just say, let's just keep running the ball and hold them defensively, and we'll be able to take control of this game later on. Again, the winner of this game avoids McDowell in the first round of the Quad A playoffs. There are only four Quad A teams in the district. All of them have made the playoffs. We can talk a little bit about what possibly can change in that regard as we go through this game. But the winner will play Meadville. The loser gets McDowell. It looks like some motion penalty. Two men were in motion at the same time as you see the pass 
by Jerry Troop downfield is incomplete. Isn't that play blown dead immediately or not? Do I would they have think their so, right. chance to turn the penalty down? Here we go, Chip. Penalties declined. It's going to be fourth down. Well, it was not blown dead at the snap. Apparently, it, it's. I, I guess it's not an illegal shift unless they snap the football when it's right. happening. Yeah, so that's fourth true. down. You're always allowed yeah. to shift. Um, <laughs> fourth a down good and job time by the prep defense. They Obviously. needed that, Gary. Very good. Very needed. Very well needed that one. Is Niptusky is one of the deep men, and the ball is a line drive. He'll pick it up on a solid bounce at the 20. Comes up over the 25, and then his gang tackle at the 27-yard line. So after Cathedral Prep puts up a good defensive stand, it'll be first and ten for Cathedral Prep at their own 26-yard line offensively now. 7.34 to go here in the first quarter, and Central bolting out to that early 7-0 lead. Well, Prep offensively, uh, they haven't run the ball at all. They haven't looked good passing the ball. I think it's time maybe to uh, hit the short pass, Gary, a little swing pass, possibly a screen pass. And then if they get the linebackers off the line of scrimmage a little, then they'll be able to open something up for Matt DeRamo or Tony Bowers. Casey just joined us, the third play from scrimmage. Gembler was intercepted and returned to the 20-yard line. Of Two plays after that, Randy Carson took it in from 17 yards away, and Central has that 7-0 lead. Bowers piling over the left side, gets up close to the 30, and a gain of three. Second down and seven for Cathedral Prep from there. They the gave him a different look that time, Gary. Duramo was out on the wing, and Bowers was the, basically the halfback, and they pitched it to Bowers with Duramo blocking. Coach John Birchtold certainly uh, having a rough year in his first year as the head coach of the Ramblers. Good start for him. He won the first two games and looked pretty impressive, but then they had the likes of Walsh Jesuit and Glenn Mills and Central Dauphin on their schedule. And as Jim Lekorczyk mentioned, not only losing, but kind of getting out physical, beaten up in the process. And tough as the season goes along. Runs straight up the middle and gets to the 32-yard line. And from there, it'll be third down and about five for Cathedral Prep. And Bob Sensor, former Prep football player on the uh, Fort LaBeouf staff, pointing out last two plays, Prep unbalanced left, which is a new look for them. And I think they do need a new look. I think McDowell knew everything they were going to run last week. Mark Lomano was the runner from his tailback position, taking the place of Matt DeRamo. And number four, Keith Feesant, who is the backup quarterback, is playing a wide receiver to the right side. So you got both quarterbacks in there, and a bad exchange out of center, as you see. And Central has recovered the fumble at the 31-yard line. So they tried a little something different, and it looked like some mix-up between center quarterback and a few of the offensive linemen caused the fumble. And Central has recovered first and 10 at the 32. And I think it was number 32, Eric Farrell, that jumped on the football. Looked like a good snap, yes, and it looked like it just went through Gemmler's hands. I, I think he was trying to read the defense, and he didn't look ready for it. They mark him down at the 30. As you take a See quick right look at See right here, he's set. Snaps right into his hands. He it just didn't look like he was it. expecting the yeah. snap. Maybe uh, some miscommunication there on the snap count between center and quarterback. Randy Carson hurdles his way, gets five yards, and still driving ahead inside the 25 to the 23 yard line. And a good six, maybe seven yards solid offense on the run by Randy Carson to make it second down and about four. Now timeout for Cathedral Prep. They want to take a timeout. And with five minutes and 50 seconds remaining in the first quarter, we'll take a timeout to 7-0 in favor of the Falcons. Everyone wants a quiet place to get away. Here's one within driving distance. The new Camry. Thanks to a new level of sound-absorbing technology, including a special alloy in the steering wheel to reduce vibration. So the only thing you feel is good. The new Camry. Quieter. Smoother. Better than ever. Erie Sports Store's Team Jacket Sale is now in progress. By now, it's saved 20% on all licensed Team Jackets from Starter, Pro Player, and Reebok. Choose from nearly a thousand jackets in all the hottest teams. You will find a larger selection of Team Jackets at greater savings than at the Erie Sports Stores. Score big now during the Erie Sports Stores Team Jacket Sale. Going on now, Erie Sports Stores, we do it right. Erie Sports Stores, we do it right. 
Welcome back to McDowell, everyone. I'm Bill Flanagan, reporting from the sidelines tonight for Cathedral Prep and Central. We've heard Jim and Gary talk all night about the different trends, different directions these clubs are going in. John Birch told, told me during the week he doesn't want to win for anything else but to get some kind of momentum heading into the playoffs. And right now, things do not look good for Prep, trailing 7 to nothing. Central still with the football, guys. Thank you, Bill. Here comes Jerry Troop slipping and falling as he tries to change direction and goes down at the 20-yard line for no gain on the play. Now, let's see if they gave him enough for the first down. Take a look at it again, Jim. He would have picked up the first down easily had he not slipped. Wow. Depends on the mark Good of the effort. football. Yep. They do give him the first down just inside the 20. Butch Smith is our referee tonight. Glenn Lindemuth, the head linesman, and the rest of the crew... Rich Saki and Darren Hayes and Ed Peck. Uh, Gary, I'll be anxious to see Steve Sensor's statistics and time of possession again that that prep defense is out on the field. Here comes Randy Carson on first down, a carrier for a good five yards as he carries a few Cathedral Prep Ramblers with him to the 15-yard line. We're down under 5.15 remaining here in the first quarter. As you take a look at the rushing, Vic Martin of East just having a wonderful season. And you saw the Randy Carson went into this game with 981 yards. He has eclipsed 1,000 yards for the season, obviously. He did that on his uh, first carry of the night, actually. And, and, and then he later went 17 yards for a touchdown. And there's Matt DeRamo in fifth place, the leading rusher for the Cathedral Prep Ramblers. So a two of the top five here as they try to run the football. Second and five, following the five-yard pickup by Carson. Carson again, big hole up over the right side. It's inside the 10, appears to have another central first down at the nine. And again, Jim is just straight ahead power as they put helmet to helmet and thus far central winning the battle up front. Central just absolutely dominating both lines of scrimmage right here. Look at the hole through there for a good runner like Randy Carson. You're gonna have positive yardage. There's no doubt about that. But again, I think Joe Tarasovich is going to say, if we can run the ball and we don't have to throw the ball and show anything going into the playoffs, that's to our advantage. And right now, they are just dominating that line of scrimmage. They mark the football at the eight-yard line. It is a first and, down and goal. And here comes Carson looking for his second touchdown of the night. Dives forward inside the five to the four. As the clock continues to roll, close to 4.15 remaining now in the first quarter. And a lead of 7-0 for Central. Third play from scrimmage, Chris Dunlap picked off Jim Gambler on his first passing attempt and returned it from about his own 45 down to the 20. And then from there, two plays later, it was a 17-yard run by Carson that resulted in the only score of the game. But again, they're knocking at the door, second down and goal at the four. And Farrell flanked out to the right right now, their big fullback. And the give is to the other fullback. He powers straight ahead, but does not get into the end zone. He's pushed back near the two-yard line. Sam Barkaloff, or check that, number 34, Andy Young. Got the wrong roster there. Andy Young carries the football, and a face mask penalty is going to go against Cathedral Prep, so making matters worse near the goal line for the Ramblers. So they'll mark that off half the distance. That'll take it down to the two. Face mask against the defense. Second down. Second and goal, Gary. Second and goal. They repeat the down. They move it to half the distance to the goal from the four to the two and repeat the down. There's Jerry Troop getting his final instructions and the Cathedral Prep defense simply trying to hold on here and prevent going down from 14 nothing. We saw uh, McDowell last night get up 21 nothing on Altoona, then hold on 26-21. And they stack him up at the line of scrimmage, so Central will have a third and goal now at the one-yard line as Jerry Troop took the snap and tried to take it in himself straight up the middle and came up short. So third and goal from around the one as we count down to the 310 mark left to play here in the first quarter. See what Joe Tarasovich wants to come up with right now. Troop comes over to the uh, sideline on every play, and uh, that's a tradition with Joe Tarasovich. He talks to his quarterback on every, every play. Gives them personal instructions and the play personally from the sidelines. Obviously, Meadville coach Ken Achenbach, McDowell coach Ron Rudler in attendance tonight. We hope to catch up with both of them through Bill Flanagan as our game progresses here. Third and goal from the two, Randy Carson over the right side and into the end zone for a central touchdown. Made it look easy that time. The hole opened up over the right side and Carson just waltzed into the end zone from one yard out for the score. And fullback Eric Farrell threw a block that would have sprung him all the way back to central. 
if need be. You'll see Carson go in almost untouched from the one yard line and uh, the fullback Eric Farrell just blew out the prep defensive end and there's Carson's second touchdown of the night. No problem. Ryan Eback in to attempt his second extra point out of the hold of Jerry Troop to try to make it a 14 to nothing game. Snap is good. And the kick is good. 2.43 remaining in the first quarter. Central has jumped on top of prep 14 to nothing. For most of us, our families are a source of love, comfort, and support. But did you know every day three children die of injuries inflicted by abusive parents? And over four million women in America are battered each year. With your help, the United Way can do something about it. You have the power to make a difference. Join us in our battle against domestic violence and abuse right here in Erie County. Care enough to help us make the future brighter. When I need to make home repairs, I like to go to someone I can trust. Don Smith True Value Hardware has the right tool for the job, or he can do the job for me. Don Smith True Value Hardware, he's there when you need him most. For cut glass or plexiglass, screen and window repairs, plumbing supplies and pipe cutting, lamp repairs, marine supplies, key duplication, and locksmithing. Take it from me, when it comes to true service, see Don Smith True Value Hardware, 3406 West Lake Road. Ryan Ebeck approaches the football and kicks off after the second score of the night for the Central Falcons, and they lead 14 to nothing. But here comes Chris Loomis at the 40, takes on the ticker Ebeck at midfield, but Ebeck does his job, and that is as the safety man brings down Loomis at the 47-yard line, but a nice return. Ryan Ebeck, a soccer player, just found out why they put pads on in football. <laughs> uh, but you got to give him credit. He, he hung in there as Loomis just uh, broke free around the left end. You can see Loomis, good job right here. Nobody contains, and here comes a meeting with Mr. Ebach, the soccer player. <laughs> he took him head on. Yeah, Ryan Ebach not only does the place-kicking duties for Joe Tarasovich, but was the leading scorer on the central soccer team trips, this past fall. Trips right, Gary. And here comes Tony Bowers, and Bowers is banged as he gets to the 45-yard line. After a gain of only one, coming up at halftime, our Academic Sports League, as always, will recap the Friday night to McDowell and Northwestern, ending with undefeated seasons, and then the Saturday scores and highlights. Edinburgh in action, a big game with IUP, and some soccer action as well. And, of course, we'll also update any news-breaking stories going on today. Gary, I think if I was the prep... Uh coaching staff, I'd pretty much be running that St. Joe's offense, whatever they ran. They're running through some of the finals you see from Friday night. We'll get to more of them as the second quarter, first quarter moved along. Under two minutes to go here in the first quarter, but a good starting point for Cathedral Prep. DeRamo tried to cut back inside but nowhere to go, and they stack him up at the 45-yard line for no gain on the play. Almost made a nice move inside, Jim, to avoid a tackler, and he'd been able to get by that one tackler. He might have been able to uh, get maybe five, maybe ten yards on a first down, but they grabbed him and stopped him at the line of scrimmage. Jerram was an outstanding runner, too. I'll tell you, he gives us all. He's got a lot of ability, but just no running room for him so far. Gary Drapcho with Jim Lekorczyk live here at Gus Anderson Field. You see Titusville beating East Greenville, which is headed for the playoffs. One of the top-ranked teams, and Northwestern, their fine team down there, undefeated in Erie County League champs. Here is number five, Lomano, running over the left side, and Central again is there to stack it up. Eric Farrell does the duties as Mark Lomano is really wrecked by Farrell coming through the line of scrimmage. This was a good hit. Yep. Third down and third and eight, Gary. They went just for the off-tackle play, and the linebackers are playing it all the way. Prep has yet to establish any threat of the passing game, so a kind of easy pickings for that good-looking junior linebacker, Eric Farrell. Now, Farrell's just a tough, physical football player, whether he's running from his fullback position or blocking for Randy Carson, or whether he's playing linebacker on defense. Just a tough, physical football player. Preb now back in punt formation on fourth down. And they run a short snap, and it's not going to go anywhere. Central reads it well and sacks them back behind the line of scrimmage. So they go deep into the playbook and try to fool Central on fourth down at the 45, but they're unable to do so. The play went directly to Eric Hinkler, and Hinkler tried rolling to his left, but had nowhere to go and no time to throw. 
I don't think too many people were fooled on this play. There's the punter. Hinkler gets the ball. He's running to his left, and there's absolutely nobody open and uh, quite a few defenders in his face. Yeah, I can't see who was the first to get to him, but whoever it was deserves kudos and plaudits, as Jim Lekorczyk would say. At the 49-yard line, first and 10 for Central now. They lead 14-0 with 16 seconds to go here in the first quarter, and now a flag is thrown before the snap of the football. Timball foul. Full start on the offense. First down. Dave Smith uh, detecting some motion inside on the central offense will knock them back five yards into their own territory now at the 46-yard line. This should be the final play of quarter number one, a quarter which has pretty much been dominated by Central as they lead 14-0. They intercepted Gemmler on the third play from scrimmage. Two plays later, Carson ran it in, and then they capped off a long drive on their last possession with a one-yard Randy Carson run to make it 14-0. And here comes number two again, Randy Carson, into the secondary across midfield and gets back to where the original line of scrimmage was at the Cathedral Prep 49-yard line as the clock continues to roll under 10 seconds and that should be the final play here of quarter number one. So we're through one period here. It has been all central. The winner avoids McDowell in the first round of the District 10 playoffs. Cathedral Prep has some work to do. We'll be back with the second quarter in just a moment. Stay with us. Runners and walkers know how important it is for athletic shoes to have the right balance between fitting properly, absorbing shocks, and protecting against injury. That's why more and more they're choosing New Balance from Krug Shoes in Erie. Designed from the ground up, New Balance are built like almost no other athletic shoe. They fit. Men to size 16, women to size 13, in widths from AA to 4E. Try on a pair of New Balance at Krug Shoes 2425 Peach in Erie and see what a difference it makes when your shoes actually fit. Did you know that the average car engine can generate enough heat to warm a six-room house? If winter driving is a chilling experience for you, it's time to visit Canfield Radiator at 18th and State. Serving our community for over 40 years, the Canfield professionals will analyze, explain, and correct your car's heating or radiator problem. Drive in comfort this winter. Visit the experts at Canfield Radiator, Erie's oldest and largest heater radiator specialists. Gary Drap Show with Jim Lekorczyk, some of the Cathedral Prep faithful along the way. And uh, the Ramblers needing to get their act together here before they trail, as they trail 14 to nothing. Hey, there's hi to Uncle Ronnie up in the stands. So, if Uncle Ronnie, if you're uh, watching, hello there. I know Uncle Ronnie had an unfortunate uh, incident. He's watching from the hospital. We appreciate it. Jerry Troop throwing deep downfield, incomplete. The intended receiver, number 80, Jeff Radishevsky, appeared to have the secondary beat, but it was incomplete. Let's go down to Bill Flanagan for a quick word. Bill? Thanks, Gary. We're joined by Gus Picardo, the uh, presidents of the Metro League, if you will. Both these teams, Gus, will be playing in the playoffs next week. The big question, where and when, and you're going to have answers come tomorrow, correct? Uh, well, the District 10 committee is going to meet tomorrow night, and uh, by, by Monday morning, they'll announce all the sites. Uh, we pretty much know all the teams that are in now. After last night's contest, and Monday morning, we'll all know. As we get set for this next play, how difficult has it been scheduling without the stadium to be available? Uh, it's, it's a lot of problems. Uh, we have to look at preserving some fields, so we have fields available for our finals the following week. Uh, there's several schools that have already pulled their fields from us, so there'll be some teams that will probably have to do a little traveling, so we're going to plan the best fields available uh, to us as a district committee. Last question for you, the earliest available date we could have the stadium. It's up in the air. I still don't know. Uh, I know the E layer is uh, on a pro uh, almost completed. Another layer has to be placed, and then the carpet. Uh, they're moving along. If the weather cooperates, there's still a possibility of seeing some games this year, but there's no definite date. Thanks for your time, Gus. Scary. All right, thank you, Bill. We'll keep an eye on the stadium situation. You see the punt by Central that goes out of bounds at about the 18-yard line with 11 minutes and 39 seconds remaining. By the way, also down on the sidelines, Brown Equipment is providing our sideline shots for John Deere Lawn and Small Farm Equipment. Depend on their 22 years of experience and John Deere dependability, Westlaw Road in Northeast. And there you see the John Deere Gator in action. And that's what it looks like. Gary, that, that last possession is what's haunted Joe Tarasovich all year. Key penalties are in position to take total control of the game. First and ten after uh, nullifying that, you know, fake punt. Uh, Five-yard penalty killed him. 
So Cathedral Prep still has some life. But Matt DeRamo may not after he gets racked in the backfield as Central was there waiting for that play. That was Eric Kinkler, by the way, who ran the ball. That wasn't uh, DeRamo. There you see the World Series at the Bronx, Atlanta, and the Yankees scoreless in the third. That was Mark Lomano, that jun a junior tailback, number five, I believe, for the Ramblers. And another good-looking runner, but it's tough to run when there's nowhere to run. Yeah, Matt DeRamo getting uh, some substitutes in the tailback position to spell him every now and then. 11 minutes to go, second quarter. Central has a 14 to nothing lead. Glad you could join us. Our final regular season game of the week here in football. Of course, we got the full basketball schedule to go and some football playoff action that we'll be uh, discussing as we move along here, depending on the wins and the wares and the how much. Straight ahead. And was that Lomano again running the football, getting hit as he goes through to the 21-yard line? But I guess if you're uh, John Birchstall, you don't obviously want to make a mistake this deep into the back, into the uh, in your own territory. But you got to start doing something here, Jim. Yeah, you, you've got to get some kind of offense going. And Lamano came up uh, a little gimpy. You can see him going off the field right now. His right knee or his right ankle, giving him a little bit of problems. But again, Gary, I don't think Preps completed a pass yet, have they? I don't. Uh, to Chris Dunlap, yeah, of, of Central, they. Uh, but no, they, I don't think they have not. We'll check with Steve Sensor about that. But the only pass that Gambler has thrown that's been connected was the, his first pass that was intercepted by Chris Dunlap of Central. Return to the 20, and two plays later, Randy Carson, with less than two minutes gone of the game, cashed in on the first score of the night for the Falcons. Third and seven. Here's Gambler off the play action. Back to throw. Fires down the middle. Caught by Loomis. Loomis in the secondary at the 40 at midfield and Randy Carson about the only one on the field that could have caught Loomis from behind does so at the 43 yard line. So you know, Prep gets a big play and they do complete a pass and it was only the speed of Randy Carson that dragged Loomis down from behind. Gimler did a great job Gary. He, got, he had time and then when the defense gets to him he hung right in there and got the ball to Loomis who made a nice catch and picked up another 20 or 25 yards. Central's playing a very basic defense. They blitz like crazy against McDowell. Uh, they're not showing anything other than a, a straight defense this evening. Yeah, they're playing the run. There's no question about that with uh, four up front and four in the linebacker positions. Out of the eye formation from the 44, first and 10. And here's DeRamo. He wants to throw. Now he's going to run and doesn't get anywhere. He loses yardage back to the 49-yard line. So they pitched to DeRamo right and had him come back to the middle of the field, and it appeared he was going to throw downfield. But finding no one open, he had to tuck it in, and he loses yards back to the 49. Second down, we'll call it about 15, a loss of five on the play. Yeah, against McDowell, we saw Farrell blitzing probably two out of every three uh, plays. Eight minutes, 57 seconds, and the clock is running. And obviously an important possession. You almost feel like Prep has to score here in the first half to really have a, have a chance, because you, you know that Central is probably going to put another touchdown on the board. They have that capability. And as Gemler receives his snap on second and 15, the play is whistled dead. Yeah, it's going to be too much time. Prep's not a real good second and 20 uh, football team. They, they have to... Simple uh, foul. Delay a game on the offense. Second down. Not something to help their cause either. An extra five yards to attain. The ball has moved back into Cathedral Prep territory at the 46-yard line, where it now is second down and 20. See if Eric Farrell makes his first appearance in the Prep backfield via the blitz. Central leading 14-0. Both scores have come via the Randy Carson carry. 17 yards and one yard. And earlier in the game, Carson, who needed only 19 yards to go over 1,000, has easily gone over that and more here in the first half. Out of the eye formation. Gemler, play action fake, short drop, throws it down the middle and threw it beyond his intended receiver and a late flag is thrown. And I think they're going to get interference called on Central. 33, Mike Zona was the intended receiver and appeared to be held as he attempted to go after the Jim Gambler pass. Yeah, I think uh, he was being held right at the line of scrimmage and a good call by the official. Pass interference on the defense. Butch does a nice job as you take a look at it again. That's a play they ran uh, successfully against McDowell, Gary, for a key first down. Gambler going over. We've seen his backup, Keith Feetzent, in the game as a wide receiver. 
But Gamora Jr., no doubt, has uh, taken his share of lumps this year, a learning experience. He has looked good in some of the games, the first two games especially. We saw him against Washington Ballou. He threw for a touchdown, ran for a touchdown. He threw the winning touchdown pass in Cathedral Prep's last win, which was game two of the season when they beat Buffalo St. Francis. And he's had some injuries. He had a hand injury that kept him out of, the, of a couple of games. Had the flu that kept him out of one game. So definitely an up and down season for the junior quarterback. First and ten. Gambler back to throw, looking, firing, and overthrows his intended receiver. Randy Carson got a hand on it, but couldn't pull it in. Let's go quickly down to Bill Flanagan, Bill. Just wanted to echo a point both of you gentlemen made a little bit earlier. One of the central coaches told me that in looking at tape and preparing for this game against Cathedral Prep, they have done absolutely nothing different from in the past. They've gone very vanilla, and both you mentioned is kind of brings up a, a new term, a new uh, terminology in football we always hear west coast offense and the pros how about seven eight men in the box that's what central has right now begging cathedral prep to throw the football all right thank you bill and you you take a look at some of those uh, physical linebackers for central that's in the box that bill talked about and eric farrell is the man who leads the way second down ten loomis is in motion gambler takes the snap pitches the football to uh, Niptusky, it looks like, and Niptusky slips and falls as he tries to cut it back inside, but does get a yard to the 39-yard line, as you see the first quarter stats. Time of possession, just about even, but uh, offense 60 yards rushing to 11 for uh, Prep and Central, and Prep neither one with passing yardage, and again, the two turnovers, Prep had two turnovers, and that's the killer, Gary. Right, the interception, obviously we, we missed the turnovers on there. Cathedral Prep had uh, two turnovers in that first quarter. And now here comes Cathedral Prep on third and nine. Niptusky still the tailback behind Tony Bowers, the fullback. And Gemler goes back to throw. Good protection this time, flings it down the field, has a man open, it's caught inside the 10 at the 5 and run out of bounds near the 3. A nice throw from Jim Gemler to Mike Zona. And Zona pulls it in, and it's first and ten for the Ramblers at the three-yard line, and that is just what the doctor ordered for Cathedral Prep. Talk about coming up with a play that was much needed. Gemler goes straight back. He's looking at Zona all the way, and Zona, I don't know if there was a breakdown in the coverage. He's wide open. I don't know if uh, 31 for Central. Mike Bennett thought he had help from the uh, safety or not, but there's, there's great camera work showing Zona all by himself. Now they've got to get the ball in the end zone. They haven't been able to run it either, Gary. So first and goal from the three, seven minutes, 39 seconds remaining here in the second quarter, and what would be a big touchdown for Cathedral Prep if they're able to cash in. Power eye formation, Neptusky puts his head down, gets to the two, and it'll be second down and goal from there. They've tried a number of running backs from that tailback position, Jim. DeRamo, Neptusky. Lamano. Lamano. Bowers has carried the ball. There's Neptusky, sees there's nothing there, just puts his head down, tries to get any positive yardage, does a nice job. Natupski, a 5'11 junior, so he'll be back for John Birch told next year. Second down and goal from the two, seven minutes, ten seconds remaining. The Ramblers pushing the ball downfield. Two big pass plays, one to Chris Loomis, one to Mike Zona, setting up the Ramblers in scoring position. They give it to DeRamo. DeRamo up over the left side, tries to power his way near the goal line, but Central will stack him up short. And it's third and goal from maybe the one, two-yard line, somewhere in that vicinity. You see where they're going to mark it at the one. Eric Farrell coming up off the bottom of the pile. He's the man who initially hit DeRamo as he come up over the left side. But it's third and goal from the one with six and a half to play here in the first half. The fullback, Bowers, got a nice job. The tackle, Kowalski, got a nice block. That, and there was a hole there, and uh, Farrell filled it quite well. Third and goal from the one. Time to buckle up the chin strap. Let's see what Cathedral Prep's ready to do here. Out of the power eye formation. DeRamo dots that eye in behind Tony Bowers, the fullback. Here comes DeRamo. No, Gemler still has it. Throws it to the end zone. Cut for the touchdown. Play Mike action Zona pass. pulls it in for the touchdown. No. Play action pass right here, Gary. You can see the central defense. Head for DeRamo, and uh, the pass is completed to number 28, Phil Auditori, who has been getting a lot of uh, defensive play this year and not much offense, but made his mark tonight. Did a nice job, and Gemler did a nice job of play action on that one. 
So Cathedral Prep is on the board, and Brian Spry will try to tack on the point after. Out of the hold of Eric Hinkler, Spry's extra point is good. 6.04 remaining here in the second quarter. Cathedral Prep's back in it. Central leads 14-7. Can you identify who it was that frightened you, man? I'll try. This Halloween, terrifying creatures are on the loose at Taco Bell. <laughs> Goosebumps at Taco Bell. Slappy's Candy Keeper, Cuddles the Horrible Hamster, Rapid Mummy, and Skullmobile. Get them now. Goosebumps Collectibles, only at Taco Bell. A safety message from the Erie Metropolitan Transit Authority. When waiting to board an EMTA bus, remember to stand several feet back from the curb until the bus comes to a complete stop and the doors are open. Also, allow current passengers to disembark before stepping onto the bus. While riding, be sure to stay seated while the bus is in motion and be respectful of others. Observe the signs posted for the safety of everyone. This bus safety reminder has been brought to you by EMTA, the Erie Metropolitan Transit Authority. Nice play action by uh, Gemler to DeRamo, and Auditory came out of the kind of the uh, fullback position, offset and caught the ball, and a nice pass by Gemler, and that was set up by a 34-yard pass play to uh, Zona, Gary, and we saw Cleveland St. Joe's move the ball passing, and I think that's the way it's got to be if Prep's going to be in this ballgame. Yeah, even powerful McDowell, when they beat Central here 10 to 7, did not move the ball well against the Central defense via the run. And the ball goes out of bounds, but it was touched by a Central player, so no penalty that time. They'll simply mark it from the point that it went out of bounds at the 17-yard line. So a mistake by Central here puts their offense back in the shadow of their own goalposts. Gary Prep moved 82 yards in 11 plays. It took them just over five and a half minutes. And three big pass plays to Loomis to get it started, to Zona that brought it down to the three, and then the third and goal touchdown pass to Auditori. So Gemler looking good, probably the best that we've, uh, we've seen him. Some other scores, uh, congratulations to Minna George, the former Cathedral Prep coach. He gets his first win on the final week of the season, and LaBeouf misses a two-point conversion late, and Corey beats LaBeouf 19-18. They tried to throw the ball in that two-point conversion. Here is Randy Carson, up over the right side, cuts it back inside, comes up over the 20, gets out of the 23-yard line, and a solid gain of five yards on the play, but he's been their bread and butter back, especially on first down, Jim. They've been able to get the ball to Carson. He's been able to give them a second and five and second and six situations. He's such a good running back, and he's getting great blocking from his offensive line. 5.40 remaining here in the first quarter. Central jumped out to a 14-0 lead, and... Uh, had control of this game through the entire first quarter, but that last drive of 82 yards by Cathedral Prep, after Central had failed to move the ball because of some penalties when they got it at midfield, really has turned the momentum around. Let's see if Cathedral Prep can keep it defensively now. They give the ball to Carson, and Carson bounces off a tackle. DeRamo takes him on and drops him back at the 30, 25 yard line, and it appears to be about two yards short of the first down. So a third and two coming up for the Falcons at their own 25. You're seeing some renewed enthusiasm on that prep defensive uh, side of the ball. One of the Ramblers shaking up. I believe it's uh, Zona, too, Gary. You can see Carson right here again wanting to take it off tackle and bouncing it outside. Smart runner. Sees there's nothing there, takes it outside, and Dupre and Duramo come up and make the tackle. Injured player on the field, as we mentioned, both of these teams with sort of different agendas coming in here. Central has won two in a row, and if they could win this game and take a three-game winning streak into the playoffs, uh, they certainly will uh, take that. As you see, an update of the World Series, the Yankees, who can clinch it tonight, apparently have scored off Greg Maddox, one to nothing in the third inning. But for John Birchtold and the gang over on the Cathedral Prep side, a six-game losing streak they hope to break here tonight before their... Uh, game which would be against Meadville obviously if they broke that losing streak and on third and one it does not appear that Central has got it they gave it to the big fullback Farrell and Farrell was immediately crushed at the line of scrimmage and all of a sudden it's fourth down and about a yard to go and Central will be forced to punt from their own situation from their deep in their own territory so a good offensive performance on the long drive and now the defense comes up with a stop Jeff Brzezinski with a crushing head on tackle right there did a super job and the punt's blocked and the punt is blocked 
Central falls on it at the 19-yard line, but Cathedral Prep will take over there first and 10. The punt is blocked. Phil Auditory shooting in. Uh, the only person they rushed came in clean. Take a look at it again. Snaps a little low. Here comes Phil Auditory, and I mean, he does a Good great job. Good camera work, guys. Good camera work. Phil Auditory, who caught the touchdown pass just moments ago, comes up with a block punt. And from the 19-yard line now, the Ramblers will take over first and 10. They trail 14-7. Here comes Auditory. Does a great job of jumping where the ball was kicked. First and 10 for Prep on the 18-yard line. Down 14-7. to seven. They pitch it to Duramo. He's got plenty of running room inside the 10-yard line. Down to the 8-yard line. Picks up approximately 10 yards. Setting up either second short or a first and goal. And Joe Tarasovich right now looking for that elusive momentum. Take a look at it again as uh, Matt DeRamo with some new life and some new freshness in his legs drives it down to the eight. So first and goal at the, well, I shouldn't say first and goal just yet because they're bringing the chains out to measure. 4.09 remaining. Ron Rudler just stopped in the booth and uh, he is expected to uh, find Bill Flanagan down on the sidelines sometime in this second or third quarter. If I'm a coach here, Gary, I don't want a first down. I'd rather have second and short on the eight rather than uh, first and Power goal on the, the eight. Power to the five for a first down from there. Gary, I can honestly say I've been covering sports a long time. Ron Rudler, one of my favorite people. I mean, just the most pleasant. Super guy, yes. Who keeps everything in perspective. What, what, what a great gentleman. Keeps everything in perspective and uh, has some uh, good assistant coaches under him and some good players as well. Great down for play action, second and short on the eight. Second down as Cathedral Prep comes up uh, on inches to go at the eight-yard line with 4.09, and they start the clock again, remaining till halftime. Cathedral Prep trails by a touchdown, but threatening. Gimler under center. Takes the snap. They give it to Doremo. Doremo just backs his way in and appears to have the first down as he'll get to about the seven. They may give him close to the six, but yeah. it will be a first down for the Ramblers. First and goal from near the six-yard line. Central jumped up quick, 14-0, and had the ball at midfield when a fake punt blew up in Prep's face, had the momentum, and one of those little five-yard penalties came back and uh, really took Central out of... Uh, out of controlling the ball game. Right. They could have uh, possibly took it from midfield, maybe punched it in for another touchdown or at least a field goal, taken a bigger lead. But they were stopped because of those penalties, gave the ball to Prep, and then they went on an 82-yard march, and now here they are at it again. That time, Matt DeRamo finds nothing. He tries the left side behind his offensive line, and Central's there to stack him up. We'll say no gain as they mark the football. It's second and goal from there, 320 on a turning clock left here in the second quarter. You can see Central playing run all the way. There's just too many black jerseys to block for the prep offensive line. I thought second and uh, short inches on the eight-yard line was perfect for the uh, play action. And if you know it's incomplete, you got two downs to run for a first down anyhow. Uh, now that Central's got to be looking play action. Under three minutes to play, second and goal from the seven-yard line. 14-7 in favor of the Falcons. As Jim said, they may have jumped out to a 14-0 lead, but Cathedral Prep on the verge of tying it up. However, they pitch it back to DeRamo. DeRamo mishandles a high pitch from Gemler and has to fall on it back at the 15-yard line. So you talk about a costly mistake. It didn't appear that Gemler had control of that one. I think he was a little surprised to see DeRamo so close to him. Uh, he turned to pitch, and he was standing almost next to him, and he kind of gave it a shuttle pass uh, backwards rather nice. than the uh, pitch. Rather than the pitch, almost a uh, chess pass in basketball. Cathedral Prep is going to take a timeout. We'll take a timeout, too. We'll see what happens when the Ramblers come back and trail Central 14-7. to How would you like to go first class, top of the line, deluxe, for only 99 cents? Now you can at McDonald's. Just buy large fries and a medium drink, and you can get any deluxe sandwich for just 99 cents. Try a crispy chicken deluxe, or the grilled chicken deluxe, a fish filet deluxe, even the arch deluxe with bacon. So many delectable deluxes for so little money. Just buy large fries and a medium drink, and you can go deluxe, 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 or deluxe for just 99 cents at McDonald's. Have you had your break today? Ten. This nine is it. Eight. The final seven. Countdown. Six. Four. Five. The greatest savings. Four. In Ed Jones. Three. Auto Group. Two. History. One. 
It's your last chance to win the new car. Register at any Shell's dealership in Jamestown, Warner Bradford today to win the car. Time is running out. Save literally thousands on every new and used Ed Schultz, Chevy, Geo, Oldsmobile, Cadillac, Subaru, Mazda, Toyota, Nissan, Jeep, Eagle, Plymouth, Dodge, and Chrysler. Save, Save and win, win the car. car. Register at Ed Schultz today. Draft Joe with Jim LaCorchick. The Yankees have tacked on two more against Greg Maddox. It's 3 nothing in favor of New York as they play in the third. Look out, Yankees. They may clinch it tonight. Third and goal from the 16-yard line. Cathedral Prep trails by seven. Gemmler on the play-action fake. Good protection. Heaves it down the middle, and it's incomplete. Intended for Neptuski, and it appeared that Neptuski was open for a split second and then slipped and fell as he tried to come back for the football. That might have been a little bit behind him. I'll tell you, no Loomis... No flags on the play. It'll set up fourth down. Loomis, number 11, came out clean on a crossing pattern. Nobody picked him up. Uh, the receiver's feet went out from under him there. John Burchill definitely with the right call right now. you got to try and get three points uh, after that block punt. 2.13 remaining here in the first half. And Brian Spry, six-foot junior place kicker, will attempt one from the 23-yard line. Call it a 33-yard attempt. It's up. It's long. It's good. Brian Spry drills it through the uprights with 2.08 remaining here in the second quarter. The lead is cut again. It's Central 14, Cathedral Prep 10. We'll be right back. Our live Game of the Week coverage continues in just a moment. Is your job security up in the air? Do you have a job with limited pay and no future? If so, now's the time to look at new options, to consider your choices, and to make changes. Your future is only as secure as your skills, so invest in yourself and get the skills that continue to offer employment and security. Careers in business administration, computers, secretarial, paralegal, and court reporting. Call Tri-State Business Institute now at 838-7673. That's 838-7673. I must have ate a gallon of chili. You ate a herd of ribs. Well, the onion rings were greasy. My refried beans were heavy. Cheese fries. Garlic bread. My lanta. My lanta? <laughs> Tums Ultra. Tums works fast to help knock out heartburn. And while my lenta liquid is aluminum and magnesium. Tums Ultra has calcium. <laughs> Something my body needs anyway. I like that. Your body? What about my body? <laughs> Gary, the year of the junior kicker, Spry's a junior, Ebacks a junior, and Jeff Heil at McDowell, three great junior kickers. Here comes Eric Farrell as he picks up the kickoff of Brian Spry and returns it to the 31-yard line. Yeah, you're right. This uh, Metro League has some great kicking. We got Ebac from Central. We've got Spry from Cathedral Prep, and uh, the best of the bunch probably is Jeff Heil from McDowell, who's won a couple of games with his field goals including beating Central by a 10-7 score earlier this year. First and 10 for Central. They have the ball with two minutes remaining here in the first half. But their 14-0 lead has been cut to 14-10 following the 32-yard field goal attempt, which was good by Brian Spry. I don't think you want to get too fancy here. You've got a 14-10 lead. you got the second half kickoff. Here's Carson. He fakes the reverse. He's into the secondary, but Prep very quickly is able to recover. A flag goes down as Carson goes down at the 35-yard line. Let's check out whether someone grabbed the face mask of Randy Carson on his way down. Clipping. No, it's clipping against White Central. White captain! So Central will be knocked back a few pegs, and that may have... Uh, set their storyline now for the rest of the first half just get out of here with the four-point lead yeah that's a difference now between going for it and not going for it official right on it right in front of him i didn't see it but <laughs> it was right in front it of was him. right in front of him and he threw the flag straight down as you see the ball marked off dave smith making the call they mark it from the point of infraction so it's actually an 11-yard penalty, as it turned out, since it occurred a yard behind the line of scrimmage. So first and 21 for Central from the 20-yard line. If I was Central, I think I'd use up a lot more time in the huddle unless you're uh, heck bent on trying to score. Yeah, I think they may have thought about doing something, but here goes True. Back to throw. He's looking. He fires down the middle. It's tipped, and it's incomplete. And a very dangerous pass down the middle of the field by Jerry Troop. 
It was intended for Farrell, the big fullback. Now check that, Dale Factor, the big tight end, number 87 at the 30-yard line, went off of his hands and went downfield, but no prep defensive back was able to pull it Plenty in. Plenty of time for Troop. He gets the ball to Vactor off his hands. Vactor probably familiar with many of the prep players. I believe he played for the prep ninth grade team uh, when he was a freshman, which would be when you would play for the uh, ninth grade team when as you win, a, when freshman. You're a freshman. Right, <laughs> right okay. <laughs> <laughs> if it was a 10th grade team, he'd have been a sophomore. All right. 134 remaining. The clock stopped following the incomplete pass. Second down and 21. Let's see if uh, the Falcons elect to do something with it. No, they give it to Randy Carson, and Carson is hit behind the line of scrimmage, and down he goes. Nice bit of defensive work there by Cathedral Preps number 68, Greg Dufala. And a loss of another yard or two on the play. The clock continues to roll. Now Cathedral Prep. Wants to call a timeout and stop the clock with a minute 20 remaining. At least for Central to punt for one reason and one reason only. The last time Central punted, Cathedral Prep was able to block it. Right. Talk about looking at different sidelines. Half hour ago, Central kids are all pumped up, jumping up and down on every play. The Prep kids had their heads down. Then a couple, uh, three passes got Prep into the end zone. A block punt sets up a field goal. Now it's 14-10, and it looks like the Ramblers have all the momentum right now. Yeah, especially if they can try to do something with the last 120. Third down and 21, they say that the running back, Carson, got back to the line of scrimmage. So from just over the 20-yard line, as you see head coach John Birch told, and in your mind, what, what's the impetus needed to uh, get this cathedral prep program? Is it, is it just going to be time, transition time needed, or is there something else, uh, maybe different scheduling, or what do you think, Jim? Jim different scheduling would be big yeah. <laughs> being in that uh, one league with Dubois and uh, Holidaysburg I think they'd Altura. be more competitive than with Walsh Jesuit and Cleveland it's a murderous St. Edwards. schedule absolutely murderous schedule they've got three teams that are undefeated on their schedule they went we went through it on sports line the other night third and 21 back to Carson Carson will just try to run some time off the clock and maybe slip a few tackles which he cannot do as he crosses the 20 another flag goes down as Carson is tackled at the 23 yard line let's check this flag out now with a minute 10 remaining that was a third and 21 play and Carson got about three yards so it would be fourth and about 18 for Central if the penalty is against the Falcons and prep would elect obviously to decline it yeah make them punt and Offense, penalty is declined, fourth down. Thank you, Butch Smith. So Central will be forced to punt, and Cathedral Prep, with uh, about a minute to play, will get their hands on the football. Central should take their time here, because they Absolutely, run another 20 again. seconds off. Yeah, they restarted the clock again. It's under a minute. There's the snap, and it's blocked again. Cathedral Prep blocks it at the 15. It's picked up, and out of bounds, I should say, at the 25, and out of bounds near the 20. And that is number 36 running the football, Jeff Brzezinski for Cathedral Prep. And all of a sudden, with 54 seconds remaining, the Ramblers have it back, and that's exactly what they wanted to do. Try to block another central punt, and they did it, Jim. I'll tell you, right here, they could have run another 20 seconds off. Three guys were in there. He was lucky to get it that far, Gary, and Brzezinski picking up about another eight yards. So the Ramblers have no timeouts left, 54 seconds. They're going to want to throw a few towards the end zone or uh, down and out passes, and at worst, try and get a field goal with Brian Spry. Yes, at the very least, try to get that as Gemler goes straight back in the pocket. Good protection. Heaves it up for the end zone, but overthrows everybody. And it looked like Zona and Joe Salaney were in that area. It's incomplete. Stops the clock with 46 seconds remaining and makes it a second and 10 for the Ramblers at the 21-yard line. I think if I'm central, I, I pick this time to blitz. Gamler, the junior quarterback, really showing some poise after a rocky start. Yeah, his third play from scrimmage was a interception by defensive back Chris Dunlap of Central, who returned it to the 20, and then two plays later, Carson ran it in from 17 yards out. At a minute 45 into this game, Central had a 7-0 lead. They built that lead to 14-0, but now it's 14-10. And Central, after blocking the second punt of the night against Central, is back in business. Gemmler firing and incomplete. <laughs> Tried to go to the near side of the field. Threw a wobbler over there. Chris Loomis was the intended receiver, number 11. And Keith Feetson was behind him, and Feetson almost got the deflection. But he was laying straight on the ground and couldn't pull it in. Anticipating the blitz, Prep rolled Gemmler out to the left. 
good uh, coverage by the secondary, and Central did send their linebacker, Steve Massone, that time. Third down and 10, 41 seconds remaining at the 21-yard line. Better get that field goal team real uh, out there very quickly, Gary, especially if there's any kind of sack. Gemler with Bowers as the lone setback behind him in the backfield. Trips to the left. And they give it to Bowers, and Bowers goes down at the 21-yard line. He may have actually lost about a half a yard, so they tried a quick hitter at this central defense, but central didn't budge. And now Brian Spry with the clock running, 26-25, should have plenty of time to get set up. And a temp would, looks like will be about a 39-yard field goal as he puts the tee down just inside the 30. So about a 29-yard field goal attempt as the clock runs to 13 seconds, yeah, down to if 10 he, seconds. If he gets all of it, he's certainly capable of it. Eric Hinkler out of the hold, puts it down nicely. The kick is up. Good. He drilled it. Nice kick by Brian Spry with two seconds to play in the first half. And we have a 14-13 game as Brian Spry has drilled two three-pointers here in the second quarter. That one from close to 40 yards out, and he probably could have kicked it from about 45, Jim. Yeah, he's got a strong leg. As I said, I watched both kickers before the game, and they were making them from 40 uh, easily. But I think Joe Tarasovich right now, he's got to tell his team, listen, we're up 14-13, we're up we get the second half kickoff, let's go get that momentum back. And of course, John Birchtold has plenty to, to hang his head on. The Ramblers showing a lot of poise here, Gary, setting up for the uh, field goal, no rush, Spry boots it, I mean, just bangs it, as you said, another yeah, there's the 8 long, to 10 yards. The long perspective of just exactly how long it was from near 40 yards away. So Spry and back-to-back -back field goals following back-to-back -back block punts able to uh, do the duty for Cathedral Prep and put some points on the board. Obviously, they would have liked to have uh, punched it in for for six, taken the lead here before the half, but they'll take the 14-13, considering at the end of the first quarter, they were practically out of the game. I thought a terrible job by Central at the end of the uh, first half, too, Gary. Ball is loose, as you see, near midfield. It goes out of bounds, and the clock didn't start, so there's still two seconds remaining on the clock. And the officials now in, in okay. front of the central bench are discussing the situation. There you see the call. First down. Wouldn't the clock start, though, even if they touched it illegally? you got to yeah. wait till the receiving uh, team touches it. Right, so the... Illegal touching of the football. They didn't touch it. Well, did not go 10 yards. Did not go 10 yards, and they touched it. In the, I guess if you're the kicking team, it has to go 10 yards before you're allowed to touch it. It did not go 10 yards, and Cathedral Prep touched it. So Central will have one play, two seconds remaining. Let's see if they let Jerry Troop air it out. It appears they will, as Carson's the lone setback. There's trips to the far side of the field, and Troop goes straight back in the pocket, has plenty of protection, fires down the field. This one's up for grabs. And incomplete. As the clock winds down, and the first half is now history. 14-13, let's quickly add to Bill Flanagan with head coach Joe Tarasovich. Thanks, Gary. Joe, great start for you guys tonight, but special teams and penalties really affecting you, especially in that second quarter. Well, it's been a whole, whole problem all year, is spe uh, special teams and the penalties and, you know, miscues and stuff like that, and we just got to go back and regroup right now. And, uh, you know, we expect the Cathedral Prep not to lay down, even though we were up 14 nothing. But, you know, those things have happened to us all year. I'm just real proud right now. The boys buckled it up down there and made them kick two field goals. Real quick, you're going to try to reestablish the ground game with Randy Carson second half? Oh, we're going to try to, yeah. I mean, that's no doubt about it. We're not going to fool anybody. We're going to come right out with Randy. All right. Good luck, Joe. Thanks. Gary. All right. Thank you, Bill. By the way, that last pass was an interception by Matt DeRamo, just in case you're keeping score at home. DeRamo gets the <laughs> pass interception to end the first half. We've got a barn burner here. Good competitive football game. 14-13 Central has the lead by a point at the half. Our halftime activities continue from Gus Anderson in just a moment. Stay with us. Hi, I'm Dave Belmondo from Newswatch 35. And I'm Captain Dad from Classy 100 here at your Erie Zoo to give you a big ghoul time salute. It's Zoo Boo time again from October 11th to Wednesday, October 30th. That's right, Dave, the traditional Halloween spooktacular. By the way, could you hand me that Phillips head screwdriver? Sure, Captain. Let me borrow that eye bolt. There's, there's that's a great, great spooky thing, thing to, to see and do. do. And you know, and you know it's, it's scary, scary, but, but not, not too scary. scary. Say, Captain, could you lend me a hand over here? No problem. Here you are, Dave. Thank you very much. 
Can you identify who it was that frightened you, man? I'll try. This Halloween, terrifying creatures are on the loose at Taco Bell. <laughs> Goosebumps at Taco Bell. Slappy's Candy Keeper, Cuddles the Horrible Hamster, Rappin' Mummy, and Skullmobile. Get them now. Goosebumps Collectibles, only at Taco Bell. It's back, and it's bigger than ever. The Miller Genuine Draft Shootout. The best three-member teams on the North Coast will go head-to-head -head and roll off on 35 WSEE for tons of dough. If your team is hot, get registered, get bowling, and get ready to win. The Miller Genuine Draft Shootout, sponsored in part by Eastway Lanes and 35 WSEE. The Miller Genuine Draft Shootout. Look for details and register at your favorite local bowling center. If you've never been to John B. Schultz Furniture, now is your opportunity to see just why we sell more furniture than anyone else. I'm Jack Schultz. It's our bid for new customer sale, and it's simple. Just open up a John B. Charge, and we'll give you 15% off any purchase on the spot. Stop in and let us make your life a little more comfortable at John B. Schultz Furniture, where we make quality furniture affordable. For all your home furnishing needs, come and see John B. Good evening, I'm Carol Wilson, live in the Newswatch newsroom with this look at some of the stories we're working on for the night beat at 11. Fire has destroyed a garage attached to a Fairview house, but firefighters did a great job keeping that blaze out of the home. We'll have the latest on the Erie Police investigation into Thursday night's murder, a teenager gunned down in a vacant lot. And we'll have a complete wrap-up of the big debate on Channel 35 tonight. John Last with a report. Plus the latest national news, including the fact that Richard Jewell has now been cleared as a suspect in the Olympic Park bombing. Meteorologist Mark Strepik has our forecast. A.J. Lilly, all the day in sports. It's all coming up tonight on the Night Beat at 11. You won't need one of these when you buy your entertainment center at Oak Express. At Oak Express, all our entertainment units come factory assembled to save you the hassle. The Mead TV and Stereo Center is only $159. The traditional styled West Point is $299. Or this big Golden Gate Media Center is $339. And make no payments and pay no interest for six months with approved credit. 5942 Peach Street. That's right, 97 Coachman conversion van. Automatic power windows, power locks, cruise, tilt, four caps and stairs, rear sofa bench. Only $19,897 or lease for $299.99 a month at Jim Lockwood Dodge, Route 20 in Girard. At halftime all year in our Game of the Week, we feature the Academic Sports League. Not only athletes in the Metro League, but the academics as well. And one of the Academic League coordinators is Gus Picardo, and he's here to introduce the defending champs from a year ago. Gus? Hey, Gary, I'd like to introduce Joey Dukes. He's the coach from uh, Montauk High School. He's located just outside of Butler, and they're from District 9, and they were our defending champs from the league last year. Joey? And with me tonight, I have seniors Beth Kennedy and Tracy Nichols, who have competed for the last three years and will continue this year. I guess, obviously, a very proud uh, thing for your school to be the defending champs to win it all year, all last year. We feel very fortunate. Um, just with, you know, any competition on any given day, anyone can win. And our students work hard, and it's worked out well for us. Now, were both of you on the team last year, and, and, and what kind of satisfaction did you get out of uh, uh, competing and also winning? Well, yes, I was on a competing team last year, and the satisfaction I got was, it was fun. What kind of favorite subjects you got? What, 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 do, what were you particularly strong in that made, uh, made you the champions? Um, my strong points, personally, were language and literature and fine arts. I find reading one of my favorite joys. Um, learning about Odysseus and ancient Greek culture was great. Um, fine arts was exceptionally great for me. I like learning about Bach and Beethoven, so I personally enjoyed that part. Fabulous. You had to be uh, proud as a coach. Uh, and, and what do you have this year? Do you have a good team this year, too? I have the most wonderful <laughs> kids in the whole world. Um, but like I said, we have a lot of really strong competition. They're 
all sorts of schools coming out for it. And I guess the most important thing is is win or lose. It is the it's the competition. It's the learning experience. It's it's the whole thing. Everything involved in the one. Uh, probably that's that's the best thing out of the whole ASL. The growth the students have seen, and we're a very rural school district, and Erie's a city. So just those opportunities have been wonderful. Well, I'm sure you made your school and your school district very proud. And guess I understand that the competition begins very shortly again, right? Yeah, this Saturday is coming. Saturday, uh, November 2nd, at Mercyhurst uh, College, we have the Fine Arts, Language, and Literature. It's going to be the largest we've ever had. 351 students will be competing from 18 different schools all the way to State College in Belfont, new additions to our league. Belfont, a familiar name. That's my hometown, sure, Gus. Hometown. Congratulations and good luck this year. Thank uh, you. Uh, we'll be back with more of our halftime activities in just a moment. Stay with us. It's a great learning experience. And we're making... Lots of new friends. Come on, we're having fun. Score big in the game of life. Join your school's academic sports league. Learning! Cool. Yeah. Can you identify who it was that frightened you, man? I'll try. This Halloween, terrifying creatures are on the loose at Taco Bell. It's them! Wanted Goosebumps at Taco Bell. Slappy's Candy Keeper, Cuddles the Horrible Hamster, Rappin' Mummy, and Skullmobile. Get them now. Goosebumps Collectibles, only at Taco Bell. From working in a glass factory as a child in the Dominican Republic, to playing professional baseball in the United States, Seawolves right fielder Alex Pena knows what a difference believing in yourself can make in your life. If you want it to be something, believe that you can do it, and that's it. That is up to you. Work hard and believe in yourself, and good things will happen. This message has been brought to you by GE Transportation Systems. Caring for kids. The Halftime Report is sponsored by the Northwest Pennsylvania Technical Institute at BA Community College, the other choice for a college education. We give college credit for hands-on skills. Newswatch 35 means business. The only local news that's dedicated to giving you the real look at money and what it means to you. Newswatch 35 financial analyst Graham Parsons makes sense of the numbers exclusively on Newswatch 35 First Edition at 5.30. Newswatch 35 means business. Anchor Scott Bremner takes an inside look at what makes the North Coast work. Newswatch 35 means business. That's why Newswatch 35 is the news leader. Why are more Americans driving the new Ford Taurus? More room. I traded up to Taurus from Lumina. Safety. Taurus has dual airbags, safety cell construction, and the highest frontal crash test rating. The looks alone hooked me. The ride and the power sold me. Taurus is the best-selling car in America. And now get $2,000 cash back or 1-9 financing on Taurus. Oh, did I mention the 2,000 cash back or 1.9% financing? So why should you drive a Ford Taurus? Because there's more to a Ford. Welcome to the Halftime Show, and let's get up to date on all the happenings in the world of sports. And our first business to take care of is the World Series Game 6 of the Fall Classic between the Braves and Yankees. New York up three games to two, and with a chance to wrap up things tonight with a victory. And it certainly looks good for the Yanks. This game currently in the fourth inning. New York with a 3-1 to one lead. Joe Girardi with an RBI triple in that third for New York. Derek Jeter and Bernie Williams followed with RBI singles in that same inning. New York looking for their first World Series title in 18 years. Well, Allegheny went after their 14th straight win this afternoon, currently ranked third in Division Three. The Gators 6-0 so far this season. They entertained Earlham on Saturday. This game was tied at 7 in the first quarter. Running back Kyle Smesko of Allegheny turning the corner, finding the end zone. The touchdown put the Gators up 14-7. Allegheny then turned to the air. Kyle Adamson throwing a perfect timing pattern at the goal line to Chris Conrad, the former Central Falcon. That score ended a 21-7 ball game. The Gators' defense was also doing their job. Nick Reiser and company converge on Quakers quarterback Mark Thompson for the sack. The offense then went back upstairs. Adamson fires 29 yards to Ronnie Anderson, who makes the catch between two defenders for a 28-7 Allegheny advantage at halftime. First drive of the second half, the Gators dig into their playbook for the double reverse. 
which Anderson takes 26 yards down to the five. Two plays later, Smesco uses the good second effort to get back into the end zone. The Gators staying perfect with the easy 58-7 victory. So with the win, Allegheny improving to 7-0 as we check out the score. Smesco with four touchdowns on the ground. The Scots losing a tough one on the road to IUP. The Big Indians with two fourth-quarter touchdowns. Edinburgh drops to 3-4, and four, only the second time the Scots have lost four games in a season under coach Tom Holman. And Gannon also was defeated on the road. The Knights lose to Albany. Quarterback Todd Hagley did have a big day, though. 360 yards through the air and three touchdowns. The Knights 0 and 8. College football top 10 scores. The Buckeyes remain unbeaten with the 38-26 win over Iowa. Number three Florida State gets past Virginia. Fourth ranked Arizona State wins easily. Nebraska leads Kansas at the half for the first time since 1984. Tennessee beats Alabama in Knoxville. Number eight Colorado was a winner. North Carolina is in front of Houston and Michigan leads Minnesota at the half. Hey, other couple games of interest. Number 17 Penn State defeated Indiana 48-26. And 12th ranked West Virginia is going against Miami. No score in that game at the half. Well, for most local schools, the regular season wrapped up last night. Time to take a look back at three teams who have won big games and move on to the playoffs. McDowell improving to 9-0 with their victory over Altoona. Laban Marsh opened the scoring with this touchdown. McDowell posted the 26-21 win. Next up for the Trojans is the D10 Quad A playoffs. They will play either Central or Prep. Erie County League champ Northwestern finished its regular season at 9-0 as well. The Wildcats took care of Franklin last night, 53-20. Chris Luger with one of many scores for Northwestern. The Cats defense played solid as well. Northwestern will enter the D10 AA playoffs next weekend in Cambridge Springs. They captured the Frank Creek Valley Conference title last night with a 26-13 win over Connie at Lake. The Blue Devils move on as one of four single-A teams in the D10 playoffs. Well, the Erie Otters are at home this weekend. Right now they are taking on Sioux St. Marie that game in the second period. The Otters were up 2-1, but now the game is tied. Second period, tied to two Sunday versus Sarnia. And that is it for sports. At halftime, we'll have more of course tonight on the night feet. Second half coming your way in just a moment. The Ed Schultz Auto Group is celebrating 25 years with silver anniversary savings on every vehicle in stock. Get to Silver Dollar with every test drive. $189 a month gets you the choice of the very popular 97 Subaru Outback Sport or the comfortable 97 Mazda 626DX. A $279 month lease gets you the rugged Nissan Pathfinder XE 4x4 or a 96 Maxima GXE. Register to win a new car at Jamestown's import headquarters, signature Nissan and Ed Schultz Subaru Mazda. During the silver anniversary celebration, going on now at every Ed Schultz location. Hammett Sports Medicine presents Training Room Tips. How do athletes come back from sports ligament injuries? With advanced sports bracing devices. Instability in the ankles or knees requires the extra support of bracing to retain stability and help prevent injury from reoccurring. If an athlete has had ligament surgery, a brace is prescribed to help protect the joint during practice and competitive play. Sports bracing, it's often the way to get back into the game. I'm Pete Grimaldi for Hammett Sports Medicine. The Halftime Report is sponsored by the Northwest Pennsylvania Technical Institute at BA Community College, the other choice for a college education. We give college credit for hands-on skills. Halftime, everyone. Central leading Cathedral Prep 14-13 to as we near the third quarter kickoff. We are now joined by Joanne Mullen, the principal at Cathedral Prep. And Joanne, I know you have a big day coming up, an open house at Cathedral Prep. Tell us a little bit about yes, that. Yes, we do, Mike. Thank you very much. On uh, Sunday, November the 17th, Cathedral Prep is holding its annual open house. The public is invited, especially all 7th and 8th graders. What time will that start? It starts at 12.30 until 3 o'clock. We have activities going on in every room, and we also have a general session in the auditorium. I would also encourage all the 8th graders to come that day, pick up their brochure, and fill out the application, and submit their $10 uh, application fee and they get a free t-shirt. Now this t-shirt has been designed especially for this class, so it is unique and no one else has it. It's for the class of 2001. Okay, great. We look forward to that day and quickly bringing in Mike Mishler, the Director of Development, who also has a big day to talk about. All right, Bill, I'm here to announce our annual Fallorama, which is our annual casino night. It's our largest fundraiser of the year. Our entire uh, community, our prep community, our family, our, our alumni come together and put this, this on every year. It's on November 23rd uh, at 7 o'clock in the prep cafeteria and gym, and uh, everybody's welcome. The tickets are available at, at Cathedral Prep. Okay, Mike and Joanne, we appreciate your time, and you're all welcome to watch the second half as we kick it back upstairs to Gary and Jim. All right, thank you, Bill, thank you, Bill Flanagan. Well, we've got 24 minutes of football left to see who avoids McDowell in that first round, Jim, and as you take a look at the central cheerleaders, a very enthusiastic bunch indeed. 
It is uh, anybody's ball game. 14-13 Central with the one-point advantage here as you take a look at the halftime stats. And you can see that Prep uh, rushed for just 12 yards. No rusher has over five, but they threw for 71. Central uh, rushed for 73, but didn't complete uh, any passes. 83 yards to 73, two turnovers to one. Time of possession favoring the Ramblers, and that, that's unusual, and that, that'll help their defense. Carson has 14 carries, 66 yards, two touchdowns. Gemmler's three for 10 for 71 yards, all in that one touchdown drive that uh, got the momentum back for prep. As I said, no prep running back with more than five yards rushing. So it was a first half of two different stories. Central taking a 14 to nothing lead and doing so after they picked off Jim Gemmler's first pass of the game on the third play from scrimmage. Carson ran one in from 17 yards out. Then Central capped off a long drive with a Carson one-yard run. 14 nothing. Then two block punts got Cathedral Prep back in it. A Gemmler to Auditori touchdown pass. And then two Brian Spry field goals making it a 14-13 lead for Central as Spry boots a dandy into the end zone to start the second half and Central will take over the football to start the second half from their own 20 yard line for first and 10. If you're Joe Tarasovich you go in at halftime you say well that's it boys you know we let it get away the first half but we're all even it could be worse let's get the momentum and as Billy Flanagan asked him do you want to establish the ground game I think that's key establish the ground game hit some short passes we've yet to see that short pass to uh, Eric Farrell that you and I are so high on. Right, uh, one that worked uh, obviously against McDowell. Yeah, I don't think, I think uh, Joe Tarasovich wanted to get out of this game with just uh, not showing too much and especially the way they started, 14-0, just running the football. But uh, Cathedral Prep has made a gain out of it and they may have to start opening things up, establishing the run, letting Jerry Troop keep him honest with a throw now and then. What's unbelievable, Gary, they're up 14-0, they just halted a fake punt they got the ball in prep territory. They got total domination, total control of the game. And it seems so minor, a five-yard penalty for procedure. Uh, first and 15, they never make the first down. And that, it's, it was all prep since then. Right. Uh, they have forced Central to punt from midfield and then prep went on an 82-yard drive to get back into the game. Second and eight, Carson bouncing off a tackle and hit hard as he gets down to the 25-yard line. So it's third and five for Central. And Cathedral Prep's defense really has been good against the run since that first quarter when Central dominated things up front. And here the Falcons staying very basic. He takes it over right tackle, tries to cut back, but the Ari Kinkler comes in, puts a good lick on his legs. Third down and five as we've just set our way. Central three and five coming in here with a two-game winning streak. And Cathedral Prep 2-6, and six, having lost six in a row. Both of these teams, however, will be in the mix for the District 10 Championship. Here is Troop wanting to throw. Rolls right, now wants to run, and tries to get to the first down and will come up short as he is gang-tackled by the pursuit of Cathedral Prep's defense at the 28-yard line. And a good defensive effort right away in the second half. Jim will force Central to punt on their first possession. Yeah, and I'll tell you what, punting's not a great thing for Central right now. Troop has plenty of time. He's looking for uh, an open receiver, and he, all he wants to do is get to the 30, and they just do a nice job of uh, denying him that. Here's the punt, and it's a bad one. It kind of slides off the foot of Farrell. At least it wasn't blocked, which his last two had been, and it rolls out of bounds at the 42-yard line. So one thing that's been haunting Joe Tarasovich all year, and we saw it lose the game here against McDowell when they lost 10-7 to was the special teams, Jim, and tonight is no different. Sure, they had a punt that was uh, so poorly blocked, uh, they, they th or so, so poorly kicked, they thought it was blocked, and the officials didn't call roughing the kicker. Let's send it downstairs real quick to Bill Flanagan. Bill? Just ever so quickly, guys, you talked about the punts and the punt block. Central only had 10 guys on the field for that last punt, just not getting things out of their special teams, guys. Yeah, that may be a problem when you try to avoid having your punt blocked, only having 10 guys up here. Here comes Matt DeRamo, first offensive play from scrimmage for the Ramblers. And Central knocks him down after a yard gain to the 44-yard line. As I was working my way during halftime, Jim, I saw them uh, taking uh, Mark Lomano off the field oh, with the two players helping him. He was not putting any pressure on uh, one of his legs, and so it, it appears that Lomano probably out for the game. So is Bobby Cox in the World Series. <laughs> Cox has been ejected, we are told. He's not only dejected, he's ejected. It is 3-1 Yankees in the fourth inning. Atlanta had the bases loaded, by the way, in case you're watching this game and check it in and out of the World Series. They had only scored one game. 
or holding one run, I should say. Mariano Duncan also injured and out of the game. Here's Gettler, straight ahead give to Bowers. He spins his way out of one tackle and then gets hit at the 45-yard line after a gain of only two. Gary, second down, Prep uh, third down now, and seven yards to go. Prep did move the ball passing the sec first half, right? Is that yes, correct? They okay. Yes, they did. I, you did not uh, imagine, imagine that. that. They moved it downfield quite well throwing the football. They tried two rushes here on their first two plays of the second half and come up with three yards from they the 45-yard line. They had great field position. They, they only had 11 yards rushing the first half. Obviously, this field uh, being used more than usual because of the uh, stadium turf problems and the type of rain we had, for example, in last week's Prep McDowell game, quite chewed up in the area where Cathedral Prep is trying to operate. And Gemler almost slips out of center, has the time, fires down the middle, and was it caught? No, it was caught and then dropped by number 83, Joe Salani. Would have been near a first down at the 48-yard line of Central, but he simply couldn't hold on, and it's fourth down. Nice job of Gemler standing in the pocket. He looked, he looked, and Selaney did a nice job of coming back for the ball. He just didn't catch it. But again, Gary, there's such a difference throwing when you want to and throwing when you have to. Jeff Radishevsky and number 22 for Central, Jeff Lyons, back deep as Spry goes back into punt formation, standing at his 32. Very muddy part of the field, as you can see, but he does get the punt away. That is picked up by Radishevsky. Here he comes up over the 30, follows a block over the 35 at the 40. 45, slips by a tackle and finally rolled out of the 48-yard line. But a nice return by number 80, Jeff Radishevsky, the 5'10", 180-pound senior, who gives Central outstanding field position at their own 47-yard line, first and 10. Great job by Dale Vactor of blocking and a great job by Radishevsky of using the block, picking up an extra 15 yards. There's your major swing and field position right there. And again, I'm a little surprised Prep offensively coming out the way they did, uh, having the momentum and throwing the ball so well in the second quarter. Different look for Central tonight with Eric Farrell at the top of your screen, the usual fullback in the uh, split-out position as Randy Carson runs up over the left side and gets a solid five yards into Cathedral Prep territory at the 47-yard line. Down to eight minutes remaining here in quarter number three. Central had a 14-0 lead, but Prep with 13 unanswered points in that second quarter, cutting the lead to one by halftime. And that's where we stand now, about midway through this third period. Again, it's Farrell and Andy Young, two fullbacks in there, a power eye formation with two tight ends. And they give it to Farrell. Farrell tries to get the corner, slips by some tackles, dives forward, and appears to have a first down close to the Cathedral Prep 40-yard line. But that was just great individual effort by number 32 of the Falcons, Farrell. Aaron Hurdle had all jersey and just couldn't hang on to him. You can see Hurdle from behind hanging on, hanging on, and Farrell just powers through him for the big first down. Farrell, 5'11", 200 pounds. He is only a junior, so he'll be back for Joe Tarasovich next year. As will quarterback Jerry Troop. Randy Carson, of course, the senior, will be graduated. First and 10, just short of the 40-yard line of Cathedral Prep. Cathedral Prep playing the run, and here comes Randy Carson. And Carson slips through the line of scrimmage and gets a couple of yards inside the 40 to the Prep 37-yard line. But it looks like they had a, a good... Ten men in that box area there as Cathedral Preps were definitely almost uh, wanting Central to, to try to throw the football and playing like run all the way. Looked like Ohio State on that play, you mm -hmm. know, man to man and just daring you to throw the ball. They blitz Brzezinski, uh, trying to disrupt the Central running game. At the 37, we'll call it second down and seven. Six minutes, 35 seconds remaining here in the third quarter. Central trying to hang on to a 14-13 lead. And here comes Farrell, this time out of the tailback position, pounding his way up over the right side, gets to the 33-yard line. And as you mentioned earlier in our broadcast, Jim, about just the, the fact that Cathedral Prep's defense has been pounded on and pounded on so many times this year, this is the time of the game when it's been starting to show when teams have been able to start winning that battle of attrition up front. Right, Central in four-down territory, running it straight ahead. Uh, right here, Farrell just too tough right now for the prep defenders, breaking tackle after tackle. Again, Gary, they uh, held, had the momentum, 
They came out. They had the ball near midfield and couldn't get that first down to get him Could going. Could not move it. Had to punt. And El Centro, after a fine return by Radishevsky, gets another first down as Carson runs it inside the 30 to the 28-yard line of the Ramblers. And following that fine punt return by Radishevsky, Central's offense now has reeled off back-to-back -back first downs. And we'll have a new set of downs to work with at the 28-yard line. Carson, earlier in this game, besides the two touchdowns, has gone over 1,000 yards for the season. Good to see, considering the de debilitating knee injury that he had a year ago. It's great to see him running. Coming back, having a 1,000-yard season. little play action uh, might be in order for the Falcons. This prep defense is in tight. Here comes Carson again, elects to take it back inside and just follows that big offensive line for a couple of yards close to the 25-yard line. But Prep, with a good uh, 9, 10, even 11 men within 5 or 6 yards of the football. Hard-hitting, well-played game, both teams helping each other up off the ball and everything. A fun game to watch, Gary. Very competitive. There have been the uh, critics of the District 10 Quad A playoff format, no question about that. And I know you've talked about the rating system, uh, uh, which would seem to be a little bit better in terms of seeding these teams going in. Here comes Carson on second down and eight as they try the other side. Look at him bounce off a tackle. He's at the 20, the 15, the 10, the 5. Touchdown for Randy Carson. His third of the night, Randy Carson. This one from 25 yards away. And with 440 remaining here in the third quarter, it is now a 20 to 13 ball game. He had that all the way, Gary. That prep defense was in so tight. He took it uh, inside, cut it outside. Nobody was there. Here he is. Carson gets it, sets up his blocks perfectly, bounces it outside, and he's all by himself down the sideline. Goes in easily. Ryan Eback will try to make it three for three in the extra point department out of the hold of Jerry Troop. High snap, Troop puts it down, and it makes it over. It made it over by a, a Nats eyelash, but it made it over nonetheless. 21 to 13, Central with the lead. We'll be right back. Can you identify who it was that frightened you, man? I'll try. This Halloween, terrifying creatures are on the loose at Taco Bell. <laughs> Wanted Goosebumps at Taco Bell. Slappy's Candy Keeper, Cuddles the Horrible Hamster, Rappin' Mummy, and Skullmobile. Get them now. Goosebumps Collectibles, only at Taco Bell. Erie Sports Store's Team Jacket Sale is now in progress. By now, it's save 20% on all licensed team jackets from Starter, Pro Player, and Reebok. Choose from nearly a 1,000 jackets in all the hottest teams. You will find a larger selection of team jackets at greater savings than at the Erie Sports Stores. Score big now during the Erie Sports Store's Team Jacket Sale. Going on now, Erie Sports Stores, we do it right. Erie Sports Stores, we do it right. Great job by Jerry Troop, the holder here, Gary. Sensational job. I don't even know if the, how he ever got it down. Oh, man. And that is the difference between a seven and an eight-point game. Cathedral Prep now trails by eight. Here comes DeRamo on the kickoff return. Has a nice return to the 32-yard line. But, yeah, I mean, if he doesn't get that ball down, uh, it's a 20-13 game, and Prep is within a touchdown and an extra point of tying it up. Carson, 21 rushes for 113 yards, three touchdowns. That drive, 53 yards and seven plays set up by the good punt return. Let's go over to Bill Flanagan, Bill. Thanks, Gary. We're spending some time here with Ron Rudler. Ron, you've had a chance to play both these teams, now watching them tonight. Let's first start on Central, some of the strengths you've seen in them. Well, uh, one guy that stands out individually is uh, Eric Farrell, the, uh, the uh, middle linebacker. He, you've got to get him blocked somehow. And uh, the Bacter boy and, and uh, Carson, they're real solid up front, strong up front, I think, and, and uh, play a lot of man coverage. So you got to, you know, they're going to press the line of scrimmage, and Prep's got to figure a way to try to try to beat the man coverage and and uh, you know do something to hurt it. Surprise you at all how much Cathedral Prep has thrown the football tonight? Not really. Uh, you know, in the games that we've seen them out on the road, we've been some different places seeing them, and they threw the ball pretty effectively like at uh, 
especially up at St. Edwards. And, uh, you know, the Gemler kid's getting back. It's his first, second game back, I guess, including our game last week. And, and uh, you know, they're, they're, they seem to be in sync a little bit. And I think they need to throw. They need some balance. Gemler trying to throw it downfield, overthrows his intended receiver on the far side of the field. That time, some pressure. And Solani was the intended receiver, so it sets up third and eight. Bill, any more questions for Ron? Yeah, just real quick, the obligatory one. Who do you want to play come next week? <laughs> makes no difference. I have to ask you, though. Yeah, it makes no difference, really. It's, uh, you know, they did the right thing putting four teams in. It's, uh, that's all there is, so uh, everybody gets a chance to play each other again, possibly. And, uh, uh, you know, Meadville had a nice win uh, last night over in Ashtabula. So it uh, makes things interesting, and everybody, I, I like it because it, you get your 10th game back, which everybody lost a few years ago. Should be interesting. Gary, we'll find out tomorrow where and when these teams will play come next weekend. All right, thank you, Bill. Good luck to Ron Ruler. As prep now with a third and eight from the 35-yard line. Gemler back to throw. They're trying to set up the screen. They get it to Dereva with some blockers in front. Tries to pick his hole. At the 35, at the 40, first down, midfield, and knocked down in central territory near the 45-yard line. That was dangerous to being a blown play, Jim, but DeRamo made the most of it. No, that wasn't a blown play, Gary. No, that, it was a screen oh, pass. I, I mean, if I if DeRamo doesn't take off with it when he does, what the play a, begins nothing. What a great call. I mean, central sells out. They still got two defenders over there. Uh, 61 gets a good block, and as we talked about, DeRamo showing some of that great ability. Uh, Ryan Moriarty opening that up right there along with uh, Ed Kowalski. And there's DeRamo cutting it back. Keep uh, prep in this ball game. Right, yeah, I recognize the screen. I thought Central had it defense perfectly, and that's what I meant by the blown play. But DeRamo made the most of it, read his blocks well, picked up the first down of the 45. Here's Gembler back to throw. Lots of time. Fires now and nearly intercepted in and out of the hands of Jeff Lyons as it zipped by the intended receiver, and I think that Keith Feesant was the intended receiver at the 35-yard line, so second down and 10. Throw you're on. right, good call of the screen pass, and talk about a huge third down conversion in this game, Jim. That was huge for Cathedral Prep. Throwing on first down is key for Prep, too. Our thanks to uh, Taco Bell, of course. As you can see, they've been providing all of our uh, pregame meals and man oh man I'll tell you at about seven o'clock right before the game there's nothing like one of those tacos and those even Steve Sensor is uh, partook of about what how many under double digits <laughs> under double digits on the tacos okay thank you Taco Bell indeed hope you're back with us for basketball here is a run in the backfield nowhere to go nowhere to hide and a loss of three yards Corey As we Pinard. mentioned about Lomano not being available here in the second half, and so DeRamo has had to do the bulk of the running. That time, Tony Bowers had nowhere to go, Jim. No, Kennard, 5'9", 235-pound junior, just waiting for that play. We saw him go, what, 80, 90 yards with an interception <laughs> against Cleveland St. Joe's. Almost ran out the first quarter from the six-minute mark. <laughs> Called a delay of game penalty. Third and 13 now. Let's see if the Ramblers can come up with another big third down conversion. We're under two and a half minutes to go here in the third quarter. The quarter changed midway through his run. They sent him back the other way. Here's Gemler under pressure. Down the middle and in and out of the hands of the intended receiver. Gemler was rocked as soon as he threw the football. But it was downfield and up for grabs and incomplete. It was intended for the tight end, 41, Jeff Volkenberg. Yeah, Van Volkenberg has good hands, and I'll tell you what, the uh, safety for Central overran the ball. Gemler hung Ooh. in there tough, and Van Volkenberg had a shot at it. So fourth down, and Brian Spry again punting from that muddy and very tenuous footing side of the football field here at Gus Anderson. 2.16 remaining third quarter. Gets a good snap, little pressure, and a great punt. They're going to let it bounce, and it takes a bounce inside the five. They're going to down it at the one-yard line. So excellent kick coverage by the Cathedral Prep Ramblers. And Brian Spry, who has already booted two field goals in this game, comes up with a huge punt that will pin Central back near their one- or two-yard line. Uh, Phil Auditory having a sensational all-around game. One of the people down there to down the ball. Uh, but a, a great job by the punter and a great job by Phil Auditory. 
Here's Spry, as Gary said, in tough, tough conditions, getting the big punt away. They marked it at the one, so that is where Central will take over. They're holding on to a 21-13 lead. We've got 2.05 left on the clock here in the third quarter. And they will pitch it to Carson. Carson manages to get out of that backfield and out of that end zone and runs it out close to the three for a gain of two. It'll be second down and eight from there. And obviously, if you're Cathedral Prep, you want Central to punt from their own end zone. Boy, he got the ball deep in that end zone, too. He had to get six yards just to get to the goal line. We've had a dandy. Prep uh, trailed 14-0 at the end of the first quarter, then scored 13 unanswered points to cut the lead to one at the half. And then Central roared back downfield in this third quarter and scored on a 25-yard run by Randy Carson to up the lead back to eight. Carson's third touchdown of the night. Throw the ball, Gary. You're in the playoffs. Let's go. Let's You're go. in no You're matter right. what. You're Might up be eight. conservative. Here is Troop. He hands it off to Carson, and Carson trying to bounce his way outside. Doesn't get there, but gets uh, close to the five-yard line. And not much more, maybe not even the five. They may mark him down at the four, so it's a third down, and about, uh, oh, we'll call it about eight yards to go. 105 remaining. Here you really don't have anything to lose. The loser of this game must face McDowell, the top seed, of course, finishing out their season undefeated at 9-0. The loser will take on Meadville, who has had a good season under Ken Achenbach. I think the, the winner Northwest gets Conference. Meadville. The winner gets Meadville, right. The loser gets McDowell. Is that what I said? It's a, it's a complicated format, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> Here's Carson, or Troop rather, back to throw, looking for Carson, now rolls right, flings it downfield, and it is caught by Jeff Burnett. Check that, yes, it is caught. Number 36 for the Central Falcons, Steve Massoni, gathers it in near the 30-yard line, and you talk about a big play, Steve Massoni with a huge catch, and what a nice throw by Jerry Troop, under pressure and in the shadow of his own goalpost, is able to fling it nicely. Super, super job by Troop, buying time, he drops straight back, little play action, Looking left, nothing there, rolling right, he's in the end zone and gets it to Masson, who does a great job of concentrating and coming up with the catch. Uh, you don't want to talk about game breakers into the third quarter, wow. but uh, that's a large. Yeah, 15 seconds remaining. This will more than likely be the final play of the third period. It goes to Randy Carson. He's got some blockers in front. He's at the 30, and the Cathedral Prep pursuit drops him at the 36-yard line, but he does get about five yards as the quarter runs out here in Gus Anderson Field at McDowell. We are through three. Central has the football and the lead. It's 21-13. Our Game of the Week coverage continues in just a moment. Six creams at 18, 12 rollers at 20, and six plain at 15. It's $4.38. Wow. <laughs> Mina Baker knows she was always good at math. She became a world-class CPA, a partner in one of America's top accounting firms. Now she's running for state treasurer, and she'll invest state funds to create jobs here. Mina Baker Knoll, the most qualified candidate ever to run for state treasurer. When it comes to dealing with snow, nothing beats a Meyer snowplow from Forest Park Garage. Available in several sizes, a Meyer snowplow can handle any job. Meyer snowplows are easy to operate and built to last. See Forest Park Garage today and check out the Meyer Quick Lift, a lightning-fast electro-tough snowplow control system that saves time and electricity. Make the most of your four-wheel drive, put a Meyer snowplow up front. Nothing beats a Meyer snowplow from Forest Park Garage, 3339 West Lake Road. It is a basic desire of people everywhere to want to do their jobs better, to design better homes, make a better life, even build a better car. The new Camry. Over 6,500 American workers. Hundreds of improvements. It's been called the best car built in America. Only now it's even quieter, smoother, more comfortable. The new Camry. Better than ever. Behind the name. Behind the label. Behind the good taste. Behind the quality, stand your friends, your neighbors, your family, and ours. Bandy Camps, and now we're bigger and better than ever with Mrs. Paul's. I'm Gary Drapjo, and uh, 
Bill Flanagan is right there in the crowd with Ken Achenbach. Bill? Yeah, we're going to let you uh, see this play first off, Gary, as Central starts the fourth quarter. Here comes Jerry Troop running to the right and simply skips out of bounds and see if he got the first down, first of all, before we go to Bill Flanagan. He's close to the first down. If not, it would be punting time for Central. He did not get the first down. He steps out at the 40. Check that, not punting time. It would be third down. Let's go to Ken Achenbach, who's with Bill Flanagan. Bill? That's right, Gary. Ken, you got the winner of this game. Quick impressions on what you've seen so far from Central and Prime. Well, I'm impressed with um, Central's physical play. Uh, the Carson kid is for real. They come off the ball real well. When they go to their three-back set, they have two outstanding blockers out, of, out in front of him. And, uh, you know, they're the more aggressive of the two teams. However, Prep as usual, seems to make good on big plays, and uh, they come up with a block punt that gave them some points, and their field goal kicker is very, very good, and uh, it's still a ball game, uh, you know, still up for grabs at this point. We just saw a play a moment ago from junior quarterback Jerry Troop really showing his versatility rolling out of that pocket, completing a big third down play. Well, we knew from last year that he's a great athlete, and I think that that was critical because Prep would have gotten excellent field position. It was a real, uh, uh, you know, real gut check for Central, and he came up big on it. We'll talk more on the Ramblers in a moment, Gary. Okay, first down, as you saw, as Randy Carson gets the call. Trying to squirt out of that offensive line scrum and get into the secondary, but the Ramblers were able to drop him down at the 45-yard line. Second down and about seven yards to go. Bill? Ken, Cathedral Mike. Prep has not had a whole lot of success throwing the football this season, but they've done a nice job tonight. Well, you know, they seem to get some people open. They've been running uh, a couple of combination routes out there, and uh, one particular is a curl with a chair down the sideline, and they hit that big. Uh, they've come back to that a couple of times, and, and they've had some people open where they've dropped some passes, too, so they are getting people open. Here comes Derek Farrell into the secondary. Look at him breaking tackles as he moves it for another first down all the way to the 41-yard line. Well, good luck to uh, Ken Achenbach and the uh, Meadville Bulldogs, and thank you very much, uh, Bill Flanagan. First and ten as you see the Farrell again. Here's Eric Farrell. The hole isn't there. He just bounces it over the, to the left a yard or two and uh, rambles Gary for good yardage. Again, the central team starting this drive against John Birchstoll's defense at the one-yard line. They completed a huge third-and-eight play from the four. And now one of the offensive linemen jumping too soon up front for Central. That'll cost him five yards. You saw during the course of Ken Achenbach's interview, was it 6-1 to one in favor of the Yankees? Was that the score with 3-1 three three to to one one in the, the sixth six. inning? Okay. Well, we try not to put those scores up when some. There we go. 3 1 in the sixth inning. As the Yankees can try to wrap it up. If not, it'll be uh, Cone against Glavin in game seven tomorrow. Gary, you'll just see uh, Rashid Allen, the big tackle, jump very quickly. Another five yard penalty right after a first down. Central trying to win their third in a row and head into the playoffs with that momentum in stride. Cathedral Prep trying to break a six-game losing streak. Here comes Carson, cutting through the mud near midfield and turns it back up inside, inside the 45 of Cathedral Prep to the 44-yard line. He'll be short about three yards of that first down, so another third down situation for Cathedral Prep. Or After Central, that five-yard penalty, Oh, check Gary. that. Okay, I'm sorry. But again, they're, they're starting to establish control of the uh, line of scrimmage again. Second. I'll tell you, they started on their own three. Yes, they did. And blew it out to the big pass play to the 30. And then from there, picked up a couple of more first downs. Big run by Eric Farrell as part of that. Second down now, 12 yards to go. Here's a little tip, and Carson picks it up. Now just looking for some running room. Gives some ground, and it's a bad situation as Cathedral Prep nails him back at the 40-yard line. So a huge loss and a huge defensive play for Cathedral Prep. Now it's third down and probably about 20, 25 yards to go. I think Joe Tarasovich picked that up from his volleyball team. Looks like they're trying to set up a spike here. Here, I'll, <laughs> I'll knock it up, and you uh, knock it down. And Carson did the only thing he could do, and that's get smashed to the ground. Yeah, Jeff Lyons was the other running back there near Carson when Carson tipped the ball. Uh, maybe Carson wasn't supposed to touch it. It was supposed to go over his head, and Lyons may have been able to grab it and go the other way. But it didn't work. It results in a huge loss. We'll call it third down, about 28 yards to go, back at the 
40-yard line of Central, and Troop try to set up the screen again. They flip it over the middle to Farrell, and Farrell is hit at the 50-yard line by Jeff Brzezinski, and a good bit of tackling by Brzezinski. He's about the only one in the middle of that field that really had a shot at Farrell, or Farrell might have had a chance to pick up the first down. Our player of the game last week for prep on defense, Jeff Brzezinski. This was set up quite well, middle screen, Troop goes back, and you see Brzezinski, the only white shirt amongst all those black shirts, and a very good tackle. So finally, they force Central to punt, and the punt is a very low one after a bad snap. It appeared to be uh, obviously touched as it came through the line of scrimmage and then rolls out of bounds at about the 23-yard line. So that is why they wanted Central to punt from their own end zone, because Central simply all year has had a tough time punting the football. They've had two punts blocked here tonight. You know, if uh, Meadville coach Ken Achenbach plays Central, they're working on punt blocks all, all week. 21-13, the Falcons lead. They had a 14-0 lead after one, but then Cathedral Prep roared back as you take a look at the third quarter stats. Rushing Central, 142-15. Prep passing, 92-27. Turnovers, Prep 2 Central, one time of possession, 18-34 in favor of the Ramblers, 17-26 for the Falcons. Here is DeRamo on first and 10 from the 23-yard line, moves it out to the 25 for a gain of two. And it is second down and eight yards to go from there. We've got eight and a half minutes left in the game. Cathedral Prep trailing at one point by 14. Cut it to one at the half. And now Central with the only score of the second half, a Carson 25-yard touchdown run has increased the lead to eight. They're bound and determined to establish that running game, aren't they, Gary? They threw the ball so well on that 82-yard march that eventually ended with Gemler throwing a touchdown pass to Phil Auditore for the only touchdown of the game. The other six points on two Brian Spry field goals. Gemler with a flag down as the play develops, gives it to Ramo. He's into the secondary, has a first down out to the 35-yard line, but a flag probably against Cathedral Prep for offensive movement will move it back. I think the man in motion turned it up field uh, a little bit ahead of time. 7.54 left to play. Yeah, an illegal shift on the offense. As you heard the call from referee Butch Smith, uh, Smith, good crew here tonight. As we get set for the playoffs, the winner of this game will take on Meadville. The loser must face the top seed and undefeated in Metro League champion McDowell. And, of course, with the stadium still not in service, and I understand they are making some very good progress on the stadium, but it may not be ready till the middle of November, probably near, more near Thanksgiving and the end of November, which might mean a, a Western final or a state semifinal if something goes that far. Prep, or uh, Erie used to have a great Thanksgiving Day Gem City Bowl game. Oh, yeah. Oh, it was tremendous. Big-time talent. Of course, back then, not everybody was in a bowl game at the time. Gemler firing down the far sideline. Keith Feetzent was the intended receiver, but he was well overthrown and well covered well, it's, by the central defense. When you got one receiver out, they're usually well covered. Third down and 11 as the clock is stopped with 7.30 as we take a look at it again. Feetzent, the only uh, man out, plenty of protection, obviously, with nine guys blocking for you, uh, but just couldn't get the ball to Feetzent, who uh, one game I saw started at quarterback, Keith Feetzent. Right. Played at Fairview last right. year. Right, she's a transfer from Fairview and tried to win the starting job. They gave it to the junior, Jim Gemler, and Feetson has uh, replaced Gemler. Gemler missed a couple of games with a, a hand injury, also missed, I, I think, another game because of the flu. Third down, 11. 7.30 remaining in the game. Prep trailing by eight, and down goes Gemler as Central's on rushing linebackers make the tackle on the play. Number 65 for the Falcons, David Young, was in there, beats his block, and sacks Jim Gemler for a huge loss and forces Cathedral prop, prep now to punt from deep in its own territory. Boy, he just came from a defensive end and nobody blocked him. Yeah, the Andy uh, checked that Tony Bowers had the last shot at possibly blocking him before he got to Gemler, but couldn't hold the block. And so Gemler's tackled back at the 10-yard line, and it's fourth down at about 22. There's those killer penalties. You talk about only five yards, but it took away a first and 10. Yes, it did. Or Doremo had that first down out of the 25. Here's Spry. Ball is picked up by Lyons at his 46. Get ground back to midfield, and down he goes. Again, Phil Auditory, just a... 
having Special a huge teams game tonight. Genius tonight. Yeah, Phil Auditore has caught a touchdown pass. He has blocked one of the two punts blocks that Cathedral Prep has had tonight, as well as making some excellent plays like that. So having a good all-around game as well. By the way, Brown Equipment is providing our sideline shots for John Deere Lawn and Small Farm Equipment. Depend on their 22 years of experience and John Deere dependability. Westlaw Road in Northeast. And Bill Palmer working the hardware down there on the Gator tonight. Some of the shots you see from the field level, uh, courtesy of Bill Palmer. First and ten from midfield, Central with an eight-point lead, six and a half minutes remaining, and Troop turning it back up inside off the option play. Gets a yard as he sneaks into Cathedral Prep territory at the 49-yard line. Tonight, Walker, Texas Ranger coming up immediately following our game. And Saturday's Dr. Quinn and early edition that were not seen tonight because of our Game of the Week coverage will be seen from 4 to 6 p.m. on Sunday. So you Dr. Quinn fans and early edition fans, make sure you tune in tomorrow from 4 to 6 for those programs. If my son tuned in for Walker, Texas Ranger and saw me, he'll be livid. <laughs> Because of you or Walker, Walker, Texas Ranger? Oh, he loves Walker, Texas Ranger. It's his favorite. That's Farrell in motion out of the fullback position. Here comes Carson on second down. Good bit of defense by number 33, Mike Zona. And Zona is able to grab him from behind, the six foot, 195 pound senior, and drop Carson at the 48 yard line after a yard of only a gain of only a yard. So it's third down, about eight. Five and a half minutes to play. An eight point lead for Central. And obviously a huge third down to stop here for Cathedral Prep. Looks like Joe Tarasovich is putting the game in the hands of his defense with those two calls. Might just send Troop back again, quarterback draw, or let him scramble around, throw, run. throw something safe. Right, run some time off the clock. Obviously a first down here, and he can run another two minutes off the clock. We're down to 5-10 remaining. Play action fake, Troop looking, wants to throw deep. Brzezinski's out there, but it's well overthrown, and he was well covered. Number three for the Ramblers, Eric Hinkler, was defending on the play. It's fourth down, and it sends Cathedral Prep back as they'll receive the punt from Central with 5.02 remaining in our football game. Great position by Eric Hinkler. You can see Troop looking to Radishevsky all the way. Hinkler had him deep, and uh, Duremo was coming up and had him short. Good job by Hinkler. The punt by Farrell, they got it off. And Neptuski will let it roll dead at the 15-yard line. So the Ramblers, with less than five minutes to play in the game, trail by eight points. And how big was that extra point that Jerry Troop pulled down? A high snap following the last touchdown, the only touchdown here of the second half by Carson. It was a high snap. The Troop had to reach up, grab, and then put down. And Ebach barely got it over the crossbar, but did. And that was the difference between a seven and an eight point game. They're now in the seventh inning in the World Series and the Yankees are holding on to a three to one lead. Right where they want it, up three to one, getting into their bullpen. Yep, the Bronx Zoo is back. Gotta give them credit. Wonder how many people will be murdered at Yankee Stadium <laughs> tonight. But. Jeff Mayer, by the way, the 12 year old was in attendance yeah. as well tonight. New York's next mayor. Gemmler back to throw, airs it out, wants to go deep to Salady, and Salady dropped it. He had it for a moment and then couldn't hold on at the 47-yard line. It got by Chris Dunlap, number five of Central, who took a leap at it, and it looked like it hit Salady right in the numbers, Jim, but Salady just was not able to hold on. Again, Gemmler rolls left, airs it out, and Salady, his favorite target, Right there, I think somebody may have gotten a hand in there, too. Yeah, it looked like Dunlap, or 22 Jeff Lyons for Central, also covering on the play. Just disrupted it enough so Solani couldn't catch it. And it's second down and 10 with 4.43 remaining in the football game. I'm surprised Solani was behind the defenders, though, Gary. Keith Feetsent. Set out to the bottom of your screen. I formation, DeRamo dotting that eye, but Gemmler back to throw. Now the little delay to DeRamo and nowhere to go. They have got DeRamo and knock him down about two yards short of the line of scrimmage. Back at the 13-yard line. So a big defensive play for the Ramblers. Or check that for the Falcons against the Ramblers. As they drop him for a two-yard loss and make it third and 12. Most importantly, from Central's standpoint, uh, that play keeps the clock running down to 4.15 and counting left to play. Well, third and 12, let's say that uh, they don't make it, Gary. Do you go for it? May as well. You, you have As I said, to lose, you're in the right. playoffs. You're in the playoffs. 
It would set up a rematch between Prep and McDowell next week if Prep should lose this game. And Central, then the winner, would go on and face Meadville, the top quad A team, the only quad A team out of the Northwest Conference. Here's Gemmler on third down, looking to throw, firing it down the middle. Neptuski's there, he's got it. And it's a first down for the Ramblers out to the 39-yard line. But a nice throw by Jimmy Gemmler to number 27, Ryan Neptuski, a 5'11", 165-pound junior. Look at it again. They say Neptuski may have the best hands on the prep team. Gemmler lays it out there. Neptuski stays job. low, pulls it in, says first down. So first and 10 following the Neptuski catch at the 39-yard line, just short of the 40, and still life. In the Cathedral Prep Ramblers, down to 335 and counting. They trail by eight, and remember, there is the overtime rule in high school football, so they'd have to score and go for the two-point conversion to tie it up. That's Chris Loomis in motion behind Gemmler, and Gemmler goes straight back to throw. Has the time, flings it down the sidelines, incomplete, over the head of Jeff Lyons, and then just out of the reach of Chris Loomis. And Joe Tarasovich not happy with one of his defensive backs. I mean, he's in his helmet telling him what he wants. Yeah, that was dangerously nearly intercepted. Let's go down to Bill Flanagan. Yeah, just one quick thing on the uh, prep passing game right now. You just saw Jim Lekorczyk and Gary with Joe Tarasovich. The secondary is biting up a little too much for Tarasovich's liking. They want to play back a little bit more, give the middle as they have, but don't give up that big play. That's the only thing that can beat Central at this point. All right, thank you, Bill. Let's see if Cathedral Prep We'll test it again. All oh, they have to. Second down and 10. The incomplete pass to Luma stops the clock with 319. Single setback, and the snap is fumbled and immediately followed on. And that is a, a huge loss on the play because it is now third down. I wonder. You nearly wasted down and probably wasted about 30, 40 seconds as well. It was almost like the first half where he, he didn't look like he was ready for it. Uh, Gary, I wonder if they have a play where they throw to Feetzent. And Who he throws, throws the, the ball. ball, right? Keith Feetzens, number four, the transfer from Fairview, who started for the Tigers last year, is playing as a wide receiver in this game and the offense of the Cathedral Prep Ramblers. He comes out, split out to the bottom of your screen. Third down, 11 at the 39. Clock running, 2.35 remaining. 21-13 score. Gembler back to throw, looking down the middle. There's Feetzen, who's got it. And a first down at the 47-yard line of Cathedral of Central as they move it into Falcons territory, pick up 13 yards and pick up the first down of the process. So Keith Feetzen from thrower to receiver had a huge third down conversion. You'll see the middle of the field, Gary, just wide open against this defense, and Feetzen just cuts it in and picks up the first down. Uh, they're giving him the middle of the field. Gemmler doing another nice job keeping his composure and winging the ball right on the number. Not the numbers, the number. The number, four. as he is number four, down to 215 at the 47-yard line. And now Gemmler sends Feetzen over to the other side of the field, out of the eye formation in the backfield. Gemmler to DeRamo. They give it to Feetzen. Feetzen drops it, try to recover it, picks it up and that is immediately tackled back at the 40-yard line. You know well, he was going to be thrown off that. Yeah, they, they tried a little razzle-dazzle, and the handoffs just were not clean, and the result is a huge loss back to the 40, as Keith Feetson was finally able to recover it for Cathedral Prep. You'll see the play, the timing wasn't there right from the beginning. They're looking for each other. Feetson still tries to pick it up to make a play. i got to believe Feetson was going to be throwing the ball, unless he's left-handed, though. He was heading this way. I don't think he's left-handed. It looked like the handoff from DeRamo to Feetzen sort of hit him up up in the upper chest, making it awfully difficult for Feetzen to hang on. But it's third down, a second down now, about 23 yards to go. Down to a minute 15 as the clock was not stopped following that fumble. Gemmler down the middle. Neptuski has it. He is short of the first down by three yards, but Ryan Neptuski pulls it in at the central 40-yard line. Down to a minute three and counting. And now Cathedral Prep with a minute two on the clock will finally take a timeout. They'll be faced with a fourth down, or check that, a third down and about three at the 40-yard line of Central. We'll take a timeout. Our exciting conclusion in just a moment. Stay with us. Can you identify who it was that frightened you, man? I'll try. This Halloween, terrifying creatures are on the loose at Taco Bell. <laughs> Go 
Goosebumps at Taco Bell. Slappy's Candy Keeper, Cuddles the Horrible Hamster, Rappin' Mummy, and Skullmobile. Get them now. Goosebumps Collectibles, only at Taco Bell. When you've lived with something for a long time, you tend to get rather attached to it. Healthcare plans are no different. But if your company is no longer offering the plan you've grown to love, don't despair, especially if they're now offering Select Blue. It gives you the freedom of traditional plans, plus all the benefits of an HMO. So if you have to give up your favorite plan, choose Select Blue from Blue Cross and Blue Shield. You'll see, it's just like the plan you've always loved, only better. Gary Drapcho with Jim Lekorczyk, a minute two left in the game. Central leading by eight points, and the Ramblers third and three at the 40-yard line. Here we go. Gambler with the eye formation set behind him. Takes the snap, play action fake, looks to throw. Good protection, down the middle, intercepted. Great interception by, I believe, Andy Young, number 34 who leaped up and caught it at the 30-yard line, and with 55 seconds remaining on the play, Andy Young has sealed this one for the Central Falcons. Well, that was a great interception, Gary. He read the play perfectly. We talked about him giving him the middle of the field earlier. That time, the linebackers dropped back, and a leaping interception uh, really saved about a 20-yard gain, too. Uh, he was open underneath. And so Andy Young, number 34 with the interception, down to Bill Flanagan for some final words. Bill? Just real quick, Gary, I wanted to get it in before that play. I, I looked like the, that I knew this was coming, but Tim Holland wanted the linebackers loosen up, the assistant coach for Central. He got exactly that. Andy Young, the interception. As you said, it clinches this Central victory. Good call by defensive coordinator Tim Holland. Thank you very much, Bill Flanagan. 21-13 now. The Falcons have sustained their eight-point lead, but a good effort by Cathedral Prep tonight, Jim. As they Talk about a team you're down 14 points. You've already lost six straight games. Uh, they came back, made a game out of it, and I think they unveiled a, a nice passing attack with Gemler. Here's our play of the game, courtesy of Taco Bell. They find people at Taco Bell, and this was the play that turned out to be the winning touchdown. Randy Carson's 25-yard touchdown run. It was the only score here in the second half, and it gave Central the lead of eight points that they appear to be ready to win the football game by. And with 50 seconds remaining in the game, and they'll uh, have it at the 20, at the 30-yard line following the interception. Was that Andy Young that made the interception? Yes. That was Andy Young that made the nice block, too, to help spring Carson on the only score, as you said, of the second half. Our players of the game will go with Phil Auditore of Cathedral Prep, number 28. He blocked a punt. He caught the touchdown pass from Jim Gemler, the only touchdown of the night for Prep. Made some numerous good plays defensively. Now you can probably guess who our player of the game will be on the Central Falcons side. How about the guy who's running the football right now? Prep will call a timeout as Carson runs it out to the 34-yard line. They stop the clock with 42 seconds remaining. But our player of the game on the Central side is Randy Carson. Three touchdowns tonight, over 100 yards rushing, and Steve Sensor is counting up to the exact yard now as how many yards he has. There it is. 138 yards on 30 carries, three touchdowns, and he also went over a 1,000 yards for the season tonight. And as we mentioned earlier, Jim, what a, a great credit to his determination and having to go through all the rehab following that uh, debilitating knee injury a season ago. Comeback player of the year. Player Absolutely. of the game and comeback player of the year. So it appears that Cathedral Prep will get McDowell next week. Right here. Losing 17 to nothing to McDowell just last Friday. Central will play Meadville, and Central has not played Meadville this season. And, of course, if they go up against uh, McDowell again, Central nearly upset the Trojans by a 10-7 score back here on the first Friday in October. As you see some of the fine crew, the names of those that are doing their duties here and we have thanked you all season long for joining us in this our third season with game of the week football as Carson gets his 31st carry of the night and gets a couple of more yards out to the 36 yard line but uh, we'll tell you about the playoffs as they go along it depends on when where and uh, how much is really the three key factors in that and we wish all the teams 
that have uh, we've shown on our game of the week, as well as those in the county league, like Northwestern, Corey, and Iroquois. The best of luck in the playoffs. Hope to see you down the road on one of our game of the week broadcasts. And of course, we got a full schedule of basketball, Jim. We got six basketball tournaments, a number of Metro League games again. So uh, we'll be hot and heavy uh, during the winter months with our game of the week sports live schedule as well. Gary, kudos and plaudits to you and Channel 35 for another great football season. Thank you, Jim Lekorczyk. It has been fun as usual. Central will go into the playoffs with a three-game winning streak. They improved to four and five after their 21-13 win over Prep, and the Ramblers will go in at two and seven. That seven-game losing streak really tough to swallow, but they can still salvage something out of the season if they're able to win a playoff game or two, and that's really all that counts. 21-13 is the final score. Our thanks to the entire crew. Thanks to Bill Flanagan down on the field, to Jim Lekorczyk, to Steve Sensor, and brother Bob who's standing by. Daryl up here. Daryl back in the studio. Bob Bowen back in the studio. Gibbons in the truck. Everybody. Did I forget anybody? I probably did. Good night, everybody. Central with a 21-13 win. Coverage of the Game of the Week has been brought to you by Taco Bell. Cross the border.